As we're going through the national anthems, let me give you the starting lineup. It's Sam Ben and Nick Cousins, Matthew Kachuk with Gustav Forslund and Aaron Ekblad. Anton Lundell, Carter Verhege with Sam Reinhardt. It's Mark Stoll and Brandon Montour. Ito Lusterina with Alexi Hopp and Yemi and Colin White. Eric Stahl, Ryan Lomberg, and Patrick Hornquist with Josh Mahura and Rako Gudis. Sergei Bobrovsky is supposed to be in net tonight for the Florida Panthers. They're 10-8-4 and four, and fifth in the Atlantic. The Calgary Flames sit at 9-9-3. This is their lineup. Elias Little, Jonathan Uberdo, and Tyler Toffoli with Noah Hannafin and Rasmus Anderson. It's Nazem Kadri, Dylan Dubé, and Andrew Montrapani on the second line with Mackenzie Weger and Chris Tanev. Michael Backlin, Adam Rosichka, and Blake Coleman with Trevor Lewis, Milan Lucic, and Brett Ritchie with Nikita Zadorov and Michael Stone. Dan Vladar is supposed to be getting his second straight start tonight. And Daryl Sutter is the head coach. So what does this game mean for both teams, and what do we have going on tonight? So Cooper Hopkins is supposed to join me late. He'll take over the third period. I'll handle the first two. This is Matthew Kachuk's first return to the Saddle Dome since going to the Florida Panthers in the offseason. A guy that had well over 100 points, a guy unlike Matt and Johnny Gaudreau that said, trade me, go ahead and get something for me, and get the return there for Jonathan Huberdeau, Mackenzie Weger, Cole Schwinn, a first-round pick, rather than having just Johnny Gaudreau go to the Columbus Blue Jackets for nothing. So that is what's there tonight. And between both of these teams, I will say this in all honesty, Paul Maurice, now the head coach with the Florida Panthers at 10-8-4, it's not the same under Andrew Burnett, is it not? And no Alexander Barkov tonight. Calgary Flames 9-9-3. They're trying to get it done by committee. It's Dan Vladar's second straight start with a 1-4-1 record, 282 goals against a 908 save percentage. He's been the better of the two goalies. Both of these teams really need a win, so we'll see what ends up happening tonight between both of these teams. As you get a chance to look at Matthew Kachuk as he's working his way toward the center ice side. So I'm ready to go for this. I'm happy to be able to bring in the first couple of periods, and then when we get into the break, after the first couple, we're going to let Cooper Hopkins take the rest of this game once he does get back in here. So I'm looking forward to this matchup. Hope you guys are too as we are underway. That's the Florida Panthers now with the puck drop as they have it. The Calgary Flames in a pretty sweet alternate uniform as this bounces in between Mackenzie Wieger's back skate. Florida will pick this up in the defensive end, and I'm just going to pull up my box score on the ESPN side. So Huberto has it on the left wing, and this is picked up now by the Panthers as Kachuk is being booed and Rakov Gudis hits this off the end boards. This goes to Christopher Tanev and across the red line now is a massive humanity all trying to take some line changes and picked up now by Nazem Kadri. Kadri tried to center it out in front but he took a big tumble along with Kachuk on the left side and picked up now by the Panthers. The Panthers are in the white with the red arm sleeves they're going to be going left to right, and the Calgary Flames are in a pretty sick alternate, all black, with the red and orange piping underneath the shirts. So picked up now by the Flames. Top end side, Noah Hannafin shoots it wide. Picked up now by Dylan Dubé, as Nazem Kadri has it now. He tried to spin around Lindell. This is going to be a slap shot that bounced in between everything, all these skate blades, and Majapani took a tough tumble into the boards. Here's Kadri in behind the office of... Sergei Bobrovsky is Nikita Zadorov somehow able to stay just on that blue line side. This goes back to Kadri now as he tries to spin, but he gets canceled off by Lindell. Again, the second year player here for the squad for the Florida Panthers because he was the rookie last year and he had a lot of good points. So we'll see what ends up happening here with him if he can continue that second year stretch where he has a little bit of a sophomore slump. Flames trying to get this out of their own end right now as Nikita Zadorov. Had his pass. He tried to pick it up off of the skate. And now this goes back to Michael Backlund. Backlund will center this, but picked up by the Panthers. It's a two-on-two two the other way. A quick shot. This goes to the right of the post. 
and Madar's blood. And they get a stoppage. It was 17.59 left to go in the first. So no shots on both sides just yet. 17.59 left to go in the first. And I think we might already have a penalty call. I'm going to go ahead and get everything together. Blake Coleman's going to be going to the box. So Florida is going to go on the power play here as we're dressing away here early. John here joining you from the Scotiabank Saddle Dome between the Florida Panthers and the Calgary Flames, 10-8-4 and 9-9-3, and respectively, the return of Matthew Kuchuk tonight. So we'll see what ends up happening for Florida as far as their first power play. Again, no Alexander Barkov tonight, so that could kind of change some things. 20th in the power play is tied for first, and 20% mark 78th percent for Calgary is 21st. So first and 21st between the power play and the penalty kill, respectively. Brandon Montour will play this here for McFlat. Montour makes the pass here for Lundquist. Now back to Montour in the high slot. Fakes the slapper and picked up now by Lindholm. Lindholm will get this one down. 17.25 left to go in the first period. John Andrew with you. There are no shots just yet between the two squads. That will change soon. As this goes back to Calgary, they're going to kill some time nicely. As Zadorov has it in his own, and he's going to hit this off the glass, picked up now by Lindell. Lindell's going to enter, although it's one on three. Now he's just going to put this around the inboards off the backhand. Now picked up by Ekblad. Ekblad with the cross pass. Now this is center back up, but nicely stolen there by Madripati. Flames might have a two on one. Cross pass over scores! Dylan Dubé! Gives the Calgary Flames a short and a goal. That was a sweet play there. And the Calgary Flames score on the first shot. Short-handed, 16.55 left to go in this first. It was a two-on-one. It was a good steal there by the Flames. And they looked like they might have had something there between Madripati and Dubé. Dubé toe drag. It was Madra Pining with the tail drag, leaving it off for Dubé as he froze Brandon Montour. And then the fluttering backhand beats Sergei Bobrovsky. And on the first shot, the Flames have the lead short-handed. So that was pretty electrifying there. And again, if the Calgary Flames win this game, you might have to keep those alternates. But when uh, Cooper Hopkins comes on the broadcast, hopefully in the third period, I can relate to those and see what he thinks about them. So picked up now, Bobrovsky now to Forsling. As Florida is still on the power play right now, this goes to Colin White. White lost it, and this goes back to Montour. Picked up now, but offsides. Carter Rahegi went a little too far. 16-25 to go in the first. is just one shot, but one goal. Calgary Flames and Dylan Dubé get on the board shorthanded. Florida looks on. Paul Maurice does as well. 27 seconds left to go in their power play. Hopefully, you guys will join in between the YouTube and the Twitter Spaces side. It should be a fun game tonight between these two squads. Again, Cooper Hopkins will join me a little bit later. So, 4-3 overtime loss last night for the Florida Panthers. They had the lead on the Oilers. Oilers came back per usual, like they sometimes do when you have Connor McDavid and Leon Dessa dump down the ice. So, I would say Calgary's penalty kill has been successful. They kill the penalty and score a goal as it's one nothing. We are commentating on ESPN Plus from the Saddle Dome on the Sportsnet feed as this goes down. Near the left side and one of the ad end boards is glowing with the net. So, again, those are those lively things that sometimes capture as the net is completely gone because of the ads, but that is just an ad on top of the net, if you're seeing that correctly. Blake Coleman dumps this in across the red line now, picked up by Milan Lucic. He uses that heavy body as he got a huge hit. On the left side red line, Calgary 6-4-2 and two this season when scoring first, and they're going to want to improve on that a little bit, especially try to get another victory over Florida and go 2-0 and oh in the season series and then be done with that because, again, you only make it twice on the opposite side of the conferences. Last one was a win in a shootout here for the Flames. So Hannafin will get it from the defensive side. is the second line. We'll pick it up here with Nazem Kadri and slap shot this around the end boards. 15 minutes left to go in this first. Just one shot in the game, but it's a goal. Dylan Dubé gets the shorthanded tally. So he got rocked, and now here's an opportunity. Here's picked up now. A cross pass, and Tanev brushes that aside for Vladar as that was dangerous. 
This one gets flipped. This goes to one of the fans. Made a nice basket catch. 14-43. As the Florida Panthers finally get a shot on goal. 1-1 one, one for shots, but it's 1-0 Calgary. So it's a Tuesday night here at the Saddle Dome between the Florida Panthers and the Calgary Flames. I will not be back with you probably the rest of this week because my semi-pro hockey assignment is on Saturday. I'm going to get some preparation done for Wednesday. Got a busy day on Thursday. And then final avoidances for everything else on Friday just to make sure we're all set and prepared. So Wednesday is my homework day to get all the stuff done for Saturday. So I won't see you guys until next week after this, so I humbly apologize. But it's been fun to work these first couple of nights and get back to the swing of things. So fifth in the Pacific is... Calgary with a 9-9-3 record, and again, they can go right back in a wild card spot if they win tonight with Edmonton with 1-2. Calgary would be 2 in the wild card spot if they win tonight. Adam Ruzicka, this goes in between his legs, but it goes just far enough to get cleared down the ice with Florida can recollect with Wendell, and now Noah Hannafin, Coleman, just poke him this nicely as this goes to Ruzicka. Ruzicka will flip it in. Calgary will take their change, a little basket catch there for Sergei Bobrovsky. And now here come the Florida Panthers left the right air and Ekblad with a dot of a pass that somehow stayed on side. And Montour was waiting at the step toward the right side of the crease with Carter Verhege, but that one just wide par move off the backhand. Scoop save by Vladar. He's getting that ice cream on Matthew Kachuk there off that backhand. A little extra scoop there with a flashy glove save. We go to the break. 13-38 in the first flames up one nothing, courtesy of a short end goal and Dylan Dubek. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Oh, and still in progress, uh, Matthew Kachuk, uh, honored, if you will, for uh, six years in this community and within this organization. And as you can see, uh, a standing ovation for somebody who really did leave it all out on the ice. And they continue to stand and applaud for a guy who was a really big member in this community and certainly, as we say, within this team. And I certainly love him when he was drafted here. And uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Since there has been a smattering of news. <coughs> So it's going to be an offensive zone draw win here for the Florida Panthers. 13-30 left to go in this fast-moving first period. 29 points in 20 games. The Florida Panthers are career 104 points last season with the Calgary Flames for Matthew Kachuk. This is the first time in the Settle Dome here tonight. Hard fall by one of the Flames near the players' bench. We'll see if they end up being okay. As this goes left right across your radio dial. Well, not left pass. Picked up now. I think Chuck does have it. He's got it toward the right side faceoff dot. He sets this back up for Ekblad right in the bread basket. Damn, the dark as he makes the save. So three shots to one in favor of the Panthers. But the one shot was a shorthanded goal by Dylan Dubé from Andrew Manchapani. It was a good steal by Manchapani on the two-on-one. He set up a cross pass, backhanded by Dylan Dubé, fluttered in the air and beat Sergei Bobrovsky. So... That goal percentage for Sergei Bobrovsky is not going to be doing so well here as he's batting a zero right now, one for one against him. 
So picked up now. Another shot as Vladar gets this one off the face-off win. Another shot for Montour, where that was rushed aside by Dan Vladar, who's making his second straight start tonight. <clears throat> Good quick save, no screen in front, and this defensive zone face-off is finally won by the Flames as Michael Stone is on the defensive side now as he's made his return. Again, no Oliver Shillington still as he's out for personal reasons. So that defensive presence can still get better. But with Michael Stone and that blast that he's got, that definitely adds a lot of layer of goals to this Flames team. That gets it done by committee more than having any individual standouts. But that's what happens when you lose Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk in the same season. There's a little bit of shuffling of the deck chairs. So Madre Pani, Kadri, waiting. Chris shot holds, and then he shoots toward the left side of Borowski's stick as that got blocked aside and dumped down the ice. This is going to get picked up now by Rasmus Anderson as the icing is waved off, and the Flames can go right to left again. Those ultimate unis are sick. I like those. Rasmus Anderson, now with Milan Lucic, as this gets canceled off up in the air. It was Rako Gudis that took a hit there from Lucic. Puck got bounced up in the air. 3-2 loss Saturday from the Carolina Hurricanes. That's what it was for the Calgary Flames. A couple of losses, a couple overtime losses here for Calgary, and a couple overtime losses for Florida. So Calgary's lost three straight. Florida's 0-0-2 in the last couple there. So both of these teams need a win, respectively, to stay in the playoff race right now. It's early in the season, but I'm saying above the playoff line here for Florida, which they're not used to being because they were a President's Trophy winner last year. And the Calgary Flames that have been on again, off again, like they can have for some of these years, as Reiko Gudis takes a penalty for carrying the puck over the glass. So that will put Calgary on the power play. Their specialty team's units are already pretty good because they scored on the shorthanded goal. So 24% of the power play, just under 20%. The penalty kills 76% for Florida. So something you would think would have to give here. That's not very good numbers here for Florida, especially on the kill. So shot in the circle gets... Pushed back out to one of the Calgary defensemen after a shot hit one of the Florida Panthers on this and bounced right back. The power play was one for three for the Flames against Carolina on Saturday. How's it Kadri? How's it now? He's going to power play quarterback this thing. He gets a nice clean entry as Florida is just really running that trap. Rasmus Anderson now in the high slot. Goes back here to Nazem Kadri. Kadri will hold. Anderson still in the high slot waiting. Still stick handling with this. Rasmus Anderson going to take his time. That was a slow, fluttering flip shot. This gets rounded around the inboards by Jonathan Huberdo. Back from Kadri to Anderson. And now Huberdo will hold. Oh, that could have been a pass there for Elias Lindholm. But he got his stick lifted at the last minute. Picked up now by Huberdo. Try to get deflected by Lindholm. And Kadri will go off the backhand to recollect. Now Rasmus Anderson. He's going to wide and fire. It's off the end post. And the... Flames say they score! Jonathan Huberto! Two! Nothing Flames! He's got a power play goal, and they also have a shorthanded goal from Dylan Dubé. I know that was on the red line as far as going in and beating Bobrovsky, and I was wondering whether or not the Calgary Flames were ever going to end up shooting on this power play. And Rasmus Anderson fired it way high, and yes, it is in. And I want to just take another look at this to make sure there isn't any interference. High shot there. Rasmus Anderson Lindholm's on the doorstep. I don't see how there could be any interference. My only question is now, who's going to be the one with the goal? It might be either Lindholm's goal or it could have bounced over somebody. There was so much traffic in front of the net. It was to Foley. It was Lindholm. It went in the net. There isn't any goaltender interference. Any, nothing sketchy about that one. It's just going to be the question about who gets it. I'm not necessarily clear, but maybe when we get into the uh, commercial break, we can actually find that. And maybe Paul Maurice will want to challenge it. And if he does, then keep in mind, the goal can either stand, or if it doesn't, the goal stands and there's a penalty call. You know how that one goes. So it's either you take the goal off the board or the goal stands and a penalty is called. So the Zebras are going to take a short look at this one. They might be challenging for goaltender interference. If I'm Paul Maurice at this point, even if you win or lose this one, I think this is probably the right decision because Florida is looking a little bit discombobulated here. 
That's just me from personal opinion side of things. So even if you take another penalty, you're already down 2 nothing at this point. This seems like this goal could be a huge swing. So I probably don't blame Paul Maurice for even taking a chance to go look at it. But I want to just see because the only thing Paul Maurice could really be thinking about is some type of goaltender interference. I didn't see it upon the couple looks that I got on the Sportsnet feed. We're taking a look at it now. Is there a distinct kicking motion? Is there any interference? Is there anything else that I can see that's a little bit nonchalant that shouldn't be? I don't see anything from the angle that we got, which was toward the right side red line. This is an increased view that I'm looking at right now. Some cross-check by Brandon Montour and Stahl in the Lindholm. That's what I do see. A good goal. So nothing inauspicious here for the Calgary flame side, so no coaches challenged by Paul Maurice. That was a mandatory, mandatory one from the Situation Room. So Matthew Gachuk has a wry smile on his face as he's always chewing on that mouth guard like Steph Curry does in the basketball side. Flames got a 2 nothing lead, and I cannot understate how big this is. Even though Florida is not the same team that they were last year, you would still think of Florida as a team that could be a playoff team, but right now, just like they said, Shannon, between the hockey guy and the YouTube side, you never know. Who knows? It's up in the air right now here for Florida. But I would still think this would be a good win here for the Flames if they do get one, although it's tons of time left to go. But two wins against Matthew Kachuk, again, that would have to sting a little bit for him. But still, he got a lot of good round of applause there from the fans, only some momentary small boos. Everybody thanked him for his services. He really wanted to be here, and he played really hard throughout the whole time. And then when you end up at least requesting for the trade and then getting something out of it, I think that puts a situation where the fans can feel a lot better about the whole thing. So another opportunity there for Huberto is that one is a second save by Bobrovsky off the left side of the pad. Now back check, picked up by Carter Verhage as we hit the halfway marker. Dan Bladar got to get back into that goal crease as this goes back to Jonathan Huberto. A rocket of a pass <clears throat> just goes off the red line and goes all the way back to Big Bob. And now this will go to the Florida defense and Brandon Montour. Montour will backhand this one off the end boards nicely. He's trying to get to the first two. It is force length picked up now by the Flames. And they're doing a good job right now, I will say this, of having their correct positions in the defensive end, transitioning from defense to offense, getting those quick breakouts, more than I've seen per usual here for the Flames. They seem to be having all their P's and Q's together which would make a lot of sense because I always talk about this personnel being really good and they've not played amongst their standards, I would imagine. This is a big one to get, though. Hannafin, you now Stone with a shot as this bounces back. Stone will get this in across the red line. And the Flames can take their change. they got to feel pretty good right now. as It's a 2 nothing lead for the Flames, although we said, just like Cooper Hopkins would be on the broadcast, Calgary usually has good starts, but they'll go between the middle and the latter half portions of the game, and they'll just give it up. And hopefully, if Dan Vladar can continue to do what he's doing, he might end up getting even more starts. And I'm not saying that Jacob Markstrom isn't the main guy, but I think that that would serve Calgary very well if Dan Vladar can continue to get all these turns in on the net and at least make sure that Jacob Markstrom has gasoline in the tank when you get later in the season. That was a great block there by Rako Gudis as they just showed on the other side. And then Eric Stahl with a shot. Now Hannafin, this one goes way wide. Picked up now off the end boards here by the Flames. And now Dylan Dubé plays it back to the defense here with Noah Hannafin with a slap shot. That one whistled just wide to the left post. And now Majapani has it as he's trying to battle off Stahl. Mark Stahl, this bounces off the stick of Bobrovsky. This is still with the Flames now. Good backhand. Hannafin into the screen. This bounces out of shot. Scores! Rasmus Anderson. Three, nothing Flames. Nothing Bobrovsky could do there, but I guess the only thing he can say is the rebound was a little bit too big. And it fell to Rasmus Anderson, the offensive defenseman. He was skating inside. Near the right dot after the huge rebound off the Hannafin shot. And it was slow, but it was picked up by Rasmus Anderson. He makes no mistake. He pretty much casually walks right in. Nobody picks him up. He rips, he lifts the wrist shot, I should say. I'm tongue twisting myself. 
for the right side of the post and in, and it's three, nothing, Calgary. Man, what a route this is right now, but I should safely choose my words because I do think Florida can go ahead and do a little bit of damage, but again, no Alexander Barkov tonight. This is going to rely on Matthew Kachuk to kind of turn this around, fair or unfair. Here it is again, and that just whistled wide of the left post as this is picked up by the Flames again. Hannafin will get this down deep. Picked up now by Florida, but they just can't get out of their own end right now. Rasmus Anderson, the latest goal at the 12.03 marker. Here is Lundell. And this one goes up the stick of Ladar and up and on a plate. Seven shots for Calgary. How about three goals? 7-14 in the first. We go to a commercial stoppage. It's all flames here early. <clears throat> What's going on, Zachy? How are you doing, buddy? I might as well go ahead and type in some of these goals. There's been a lot of them so far. So picked up now Sam Bennett in toward the offensive zone. Now a shot there from Forsling. That gets gloved aside by Vladar. Now toward the right faceoff. That was Ichika tried to clear. Bounced off Carter Verhege. And now Calgary got to get back into the defensive zone. Sam Bennett will live this one here for Ekblad. And now Backlund. Now for Rizichka, it could be a three-on-two, but Rizichka got canceled off nicely with some active stick checks. But Calgary hits this off the end boards as Rasmus Anderson's way in deep. He's toward the left side of the red line now as Hannafin will try to pinch and get some pressure. And now some slight boos there for Matthew Kachuk as he stick handles back in the defensive zone and goes ahead and take a change. And it's unfair for me to say that Matthew Kachuk has been silent in this game. I will say for the rest of the Florida Panthers, have all been silent. They're being spanked right now by the Calgary Flames. They've given up three goals on seven shots, but it's kind of like the game I did the other day between the Maple Leafs and Red Wings with Billy Huso. It was the limited shots against him. He ended up giving up some. Shot from the back side of the net, trying to bake it off the right side of the bar, did one of the Panthers, and that goes back into the defensive end for the Panthers now. They're trying to test for dark. Zadorov will go back in his own end. And he gets it sticked away from him. He's got to hustle back toward the right side red line. Good active stick check. Knocks it away. And this goes back to Racco Gudis for the Florida Panthers. Gudis with the outstretch pass. He knocks that way up out of play. And some of the fans got to do a duck toward the right side of the faceoff down as they got launched way up out of play. So 537, we get another media stoppage. 3 0 Flames. <clears throat> Thank you. 
So I'm just going in while there's not a lot of people in here, just typing in these goals and get everything else all squared away for the story. Full coverage will follow at hopefulsportsguide.wordpress.com. By the third period, I should be joined by my broadcast partner, Cooper Hopkins, in a little bit late night tonight. So I'll let him take the third period. I'm going to handle the first two. <clears throat> Appreciate anyone else that's been following along on the Twitter spaces and on the YouTube side. I said, does Kachuk score multiple goals tonight? That is going to be the poll question. This one vote says yes. I'm going to leave that one up there right now. Let's see what Florida can bring because they are getting spanked right now. 5.30 left to go in the first period. John under with you back on the official call. It is a 3 nothing lead for the Calgary Flames. And again, as I've said going into the Open, these are two teams that need a win to stay above the prospective playoff line. I understand it is early. We're just going into December now. But again, as Cooper Hopkins has said, this season is not a newborn. He has said it eloquently and correctly here. Both these teams want to get back on track. And here's the one thing I'll say as we get a little bit of a stoppage. The question was last year for the Florida Panthers and the President's Trophy winners, right, was Andrew Burnett the right back of the job? I will say this, and this is in hindsight speaking, this is someone that's watched a lot of games and all this stuff throughout the years and loves bringing all these calls and stuff to you, and I'm not the smartest man in the room. I'm far from it. But when you're talking about firing Andrew Burnett after getting swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning, which is pretty much the big brother there from the Florida side of the teams, you're asking for a lot. 2-1-0 opportunity, and that one goes wanting. And Vladar bangs into the post. And let's see if Dan Vladar is okay. Maybe if he just knocked the intent, knocked the net off unintentionally, or if he turned his back into anticipating a sprawling out save. We'll see what ends up happening as Jacob Markstrom is looking on. What I was going to say, we're going to go ahead and look at Vladar here first just to make sure everything else is okay. He was trying to, that's what happened. One of the flames actually slammed into Vladar. That was Noah Hannafin going for the dive, and he pushed Vladar into the post. That can't feel good, but Dan Wood should be okay. What I was going to say, though, for the Panthers, that's a lot to ask for Andrew Burnett in the sense of, okay, yeah, you got swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning in the second round of the playoffs, but is that enough to just go ahead and fire the guy, considering every single time this team goes down three or four goals, they can come back and do some things? Paul Maurice hasn't shown that same spontaneity as far as wanting to do that for the offense, and this Florida team does not look like the team they did last year. So was firing Andrew Burnett the correct decision? That's just my guess. So Verhege, we'll get this now, but Hannafin gets to it. Kadri with a long outstretched pass. Majapani got knocked down, still made a play from his knees. This is Dylan Dubé. We'll go ahead and dump this one in, and Nazem and Kadri and Dubé takes the change as this goes back to Hannafin. Now, Rzichka fires it way wide. This goes back down to Florida. Here's a quick opportunity, but a good active stick check here by the Flames as they get this across the Flaming Sea. And now Michael Backlund. Here's a two-on-one for Rzichka. Gets the pass across. Misses the net, though, with the wrist shot as he was in for the top right of the bar. Panthers get this one as they float it down safely, but into the stick of Christopher Tanev. Panthers hit this off the inboards. And now get this down. <clears throat> Is that a Muzichka? We'll clear it. 
two goals and one assist in the last game here for Rzichka. So he's been good since he's moved around. And we'll see again with Daryl Sutter. He's trying to move Huberto and all that stuff back on the first line. They're trying to do everything else. They're going to get everything all squared away, I think, eventually. A lot of moving pieces here for Calgary. And I can't expect them to get it all done early, as most fans would like. I know we talked about that from the beginning of the season. But the adjustment period is now. And the 5-1 and one start did, wasn't really the – Situation that Calgary could have been in throughout all year. They need this adjustment to get everything else together and get things going. And I think that they will at some point because the defensive personnel is too good to continue to struggle. Colin White gets the pass now. He's bounced in between a couple of skate blades. Ladar's going to take no chances. He bounced off him and holds. Rasmus Anderson comes together there with White as they go to a little bit of a half and half commercial. So we'll see if anything actually comes of that. But I won't know it because I'm seeing a commercial for air conditioning. <laughs> so we're at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome right now. John on here with you. It is a 3 nothing lead for the Calgary Flames. It's limited shot opportunities on both sides. But it's been fun in the sense of what you see right now for the Flames. And if you're the Panthers, I really think all you can do is go either into the end of this period and score a goal, which is obvious, or at least come back in from the break going into the second period. you got to get one on the board here. You get another one here, even with the way Calgary has been in terms of blowing some leads the way it's been going in the NHL. I don't think they blow a four-goal lead tonight, but maybe I'm jinxing myself. In the sense of picked up now by Rasmus Anderson as this goes off the backhand, and now to Sergei Bobrovsky. 2.30 <clears throat> left to go in this first period. John Andre with it from Scotiabank Seldom. Picked up now by Racco Gudis. He's going to hit this off the inboards. This goes back to Tana, but before it hits Bladar's glove. And now Antoine Lundell will go all the way back to Racco Gudis. Gudis with the bomb pass again. As he's going to set this up here with Nick Cousins. So first line that looks a lot different as far as what Florida can bring. When you're missing Alexander Barkov, that's not exactly an easy one to replace. And when you think about it on the other side, they could definitely still use Jonathan Huberto. Make no mistake about it for the Florida Panthers as far as being able to get some stuff set up and get some goal score and set up there for a good shot. So lots of moving pieces in between both teams. And, again, this is Kachuk's first return to the Saddle Dome since becoming a Florida Panther, but it's going swimmingly here for the Calgary Flames so far. So Lewis will get this one down. Hannafin will just play this as this gets intercepted by Lindell. Bennett gets knocked down. No call on the other side as we play on. And here's a race. Dylan Dubé trying to cut off Sergei Bobrovsky. And the Flames do, at least, with Majapani. And Nazem Kadri gets this one to Zadorov. Zadorov into the traffic and hit off the stick of Kadri. And this got put down the ice. Zadorov got cross-checked. And that's going to be called. Matthew Kachuk's going to the box for cross-checking Nikita Zadorov. So the start for the Florida Panthers could not be any worse now that their superstar is sitting in the box for two. And again, if the Calgary Flames score, they'll put Matthew Kachuk back out between the minute and eight. If not, this carries over for another 52 seconds, if I got my math correct. <clears throat> so another power play here for the Calgary Flames. Their specialty teams has been absolutely perfect, as it's been one shorthanded goal, one power play goal, as Paul Maurice had a little bit of a laugh there as he cross-checked. Nikita Zadorov, but actually, when you're thinking about it as a team, what's really funny, I don't think you're smiling if you're the GM right now. Rasmus Anderson will play this one to Foley, picks it back up to Foley, will spin around near the left side dot, and this is an inauspicious pass. This will allow Florida to be able to kill some time. For Stahl, this is right into the catching glove of Vladar. Vladar just made a quick move because he didn't hear the whistle, trying to make sure it wasn't getting taken away. So with 49 seconds left to go in the first period, it's a shorthanded opportunity there for the Panthers. Stahl just fired it right on net there, Stahl, and uh, making sure Vladar just moved out of the way alertly until he got that whistle. <clears throat> Ten shots to seven in favor of the Panthers. They're down three goals. This power play becomes something even in the first period. I'll just go ahead and say it. It's ultimately important. One of the Flames actually got hooked on the hands with a high stick, and no call as this gets dumped down the ice. Vladar will slow it down with the goal stick, but Noah Hannafin will come back and pick it up. Hannafin with the cross pass to Adam Ruzichka. Now back from Michael Backlund, and now Noah Hannafin goes across the Flaming Sea 
He's going to back up and stick handle just for a little bit as this goes to Andrew Madripati. Now Rosichka gets canceled off by the defense here in Florida as Lusterani gets knocked down. Stone fired it way wide. Somebody's got a heads up there. 15.3 as Michael Stone can fire that thing up there about 95 plus. Anytime he gives up those slap shots, and I always have to say that because my broadcast partner always mentions it. It's always in the back of my mind. 15 seconds left to go in this first period. Drum under with you. When we come back, I will commentate the second period for you, and we will look around the league during our intermission. Cooper Hopkins should be joining me by the third period. I'll let him take that full final stanza. This could be complete mop-up duty at that point if this stays the way that it is, but Florida's going to need a big second period. Down to five seconds. Lindholm centered it out in front of Bobrovsky, but he held that left side of the blue paint and stopped the puck with three seconds left to go in the first. It's ten shots to seven in favor of the Florida Panthers, but it's three goals. One shorthanded, one power play, one even strength, and that's why the Pan that's why the Panthers are down 3-0. Nazem Kadri quickly going to take this draw. The main thing is just to – Win this back to the side for one of the wingers. Get a quick shot. Do whatever you can. There it is. One timer. And that one is just blocking the side. As we end the first, Calgary up 3 0. And we come back, called second period. All right, so after one period of play, it's 3 nothing Calgary. They scored a goal at 3.05 as Andrew Mondrapani got a great steal. He was skating on the two-on-one left to right across your radio dial as far as a backhand pass. Dylan Dubé scores on the flutter on the two-on-one, makes it one nothing Calgary. At the 9.21 mark, traffic in front of the net, and Jonathan Huberdell was the last to touch the puck and up across the goal line in a mad dash. 2-0 Calgary, and at the 12-03 mark, a big rebound from the Noah Hannafin shot. It was slow. It was just snail pacing across the right side dot. Hannafin, uh, Rasmus Anderson, rather, busts in, hits the wrist shot toward the right side corner. 3-0 Flames after one. We're going to take a look around the league in a moment and catch some games in progress. Well, we can. <clears throat> so let's take a look around the league. If anyone else is in here between uh, Twitter spaces and the YouTube side, let's go ahead and do that. Let me know what game you want to see in progress. So we went over the first period stats. Let me take a look around the league right now. It's a 2-1 lead for the Philadelphia Flyers over the New York Islanders. The Flyers a little bit in free fall now, 7-10-5. The Islanders are 15-8. Not a overtime loss in between them at this point. 
2-1, Flyers with the lead. The Preds have a 1-0 lead on the Ducks. The Ducks are 6-15-1. The Preds are 9-9-2. The Jets all over the Avalanche. And that was a game I was considering doing. A little bit of a surprise there. 13-6-1. And, and not because you know, the Jets are sitting second in the Central, but the Avalanche are not one of those teams that go ahead and get bombarded, although they're still dealing with some issues on the defensive side. And in our game tonight, it's a 3 nothing lead for the Flames over the Panthers. Again, Cooper Hopkins will be with me in the start of the third period, he thinks. So it'll be the Capitals and the Canucks at 10, the Kraken and the Kings at 10.30. I'll probably get to watch a little bit of that late game <clears throat> as we go along when I'm typing up this story. Bruins beat the Lightning. That's final, 3-1. And the Sharks... Wall up the Canadians 4-1. The Canadians are 11-10-1, so they're above NHL 500. The Sharks at feed 13-4, probably a little bit better than anybody expected, if you can believe that. Whew. Okay, so just three basketball games here tonight. I can go ahead and guess type this one up here shortly. 140-110. My God, the Knicks just destroyed the Pistons. Golden State and Dallas on TNT. Dallas 108-104 with the lead over Golden State. And Clippers Portland will be on at 10 Eastern. New York. Holy cow, 36 for Randall to that Alongside Eric Francis and Megan Nicholson, much more on the return of Patrick Kipchak right now. It's all plays three nothing after one. It's a beautiful talk of basketball with Rich Jones kids. And Jackson's old Rick alive. Lakers Bucks in a special offense with Stephen A. Park with the Winner Friday on ESPN. Are you ready for football to get down to the nitty gritty? Or whatever this is? Are you making plans for football? Slide into football. Slide into football. And brushing up on your Spanish for football? Are you standing up? Breaking down? And staying tight for football? 
Quentin Grimes had Oh my god. Thank you. 
Well, something else that he really brings to a dressing room is a ton of character. And when you bring a guy like that in, it, it really is contagious. The other players, you know, I played with teammates that have, you know, been agitators. That's, that's an, like an energy that you feed off of. And when you see someone like Matthew Kachuk, the grit that he plays with, you find that find a little bit more grit yourself as well. He certainly is, or was, I should say, the pulse of that team for a long time. Um, and he's got 29 points in 22 games. So to your point, he is, he is rolling and loving life in Florida. All right, let's talk about the Calgary Flames because, hey, there has been a lot of talk from the outside and internally about getting the offense. Where is it going to come from? They found it early. I spoke with Uber for just a moment. Now you get goals in shorthand, or you get a power play, or you get a straight goal. Right now, they have to be feeling good in that room. Coming into this game, statistically, offense has been obviously a problem. And, you know, if you look at specifically slot shots, inner slot shots, and the inner slot being considered the most high danger area on the ice, that is where 50% of goals are scored year over year. And this is clearly an area that the Calgary Flames have struggled with. And I asked Daryl Sutter about this this morning, and this was something that they had, they had looked at, something that they wanted to work on. And he said it wasn't as much of a team staff, but rather that it, it showed that the players that need to be getting to those areas that need to be creating traffic getting to the interior that they weren't doing it and that has been the difference in this first period for this Calgary Flames team in my opinion they're getting to those dirty areas they're getting to the front of the net. And I think execution is the word to keep hearing. Jonathan Huberto used it. Coach has been using it all week long. They focus so much on shot volume, and I think they're fourth in the league as the graphics show in shots on goal. But I think that comes sometimes they sacrifice perhaps making that extra pass and making that better play. And that's Jonathan Huberto's forte. It's nice to see him get a goal, especially on that when the focus is on the other guy. Hey, listen, Jonathan Huberto, people are saying we got to get him going. He's gone now. You need a little bit of depth scoring, they've got a little bit of that going as well. Three nothing after one. Welcome to Subway's biggest drink rush yet. As we're up to 12 new subs for the all new Subway series menu. This is exciting, Tony. Oh, you've never seen stats like this before, Chuck. The new monster is Juicy Steak and Crispy Bacon. Bang! But what about the new balls? These balls come in marinara, coupled with fresh mozzarella. It looks so good. It makes me hangry. Did you say hangry? And pepperoni, too. Pepperoni? I'm hangry. The new Subway series. What's your pick? True story. If you want to stand out, you have to cross every line. Ohio State, Duke, North Carolina, Indiana. Experience the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Begins Wednesday at 7.15 on ESPN. <laughs> has magic, power, and every once in a while, that's miracles. Is that what have it? That's our story. Who blinks first? Visit theheismanhouse.com and see if it's you. Feels like a change is coming. Lakers Flex, and a special podcast with Steven Day, part of the Double Day, Friday. Kevin Durant 
and the Nets. It all goes down on Sportsnet and Sportsnet now Friday. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, <coughs> Now we get you set for the second period. You go upstairs to Kelly Ring. Right back at 52 seconds left to Calgary's second power play match. You can jump off of that cross check on the keys to go off. Flames are one for one. And then the young man of this power play up 3 nothing after a terrific first period. Calgary going very good. And the goaltender can't even though <coughs> Underway in the second period right now. Calgary has got an abbreviated power play that carried over from the second period as Matthew Kachuk is in the box for cross-checking Nikita Zadorov. So the Flames already have a power play goal. They already have a shorthanded goal. Dan Vladar is only to stop 10 shots in back-to-back -back starts. So things are going swimmingly right now for the Calgary Flames. But let's see if they can continue right now. As 20 seconds are left on the extra man right now. One for 17 in the last... Six home games on the par play is Calgary's par play at home in the Saddle Dome. So that is numbers that need to be improved, but at least they got one tonight. I wonder if that one for 17 is including tonight. <laughs> so this is picked up now up the backhand by Rizzi Trey. Puts this around the inboards. Back now to Noah Hannafin. Hannafin going to let one go. Went off the outside of the cage and outside of the post. That's Kachuk. Comes back down off the ice. The icing is waved off. This is with the Flames now. They're going to be going left to right across this pair with the sick alternate black unis. I like that with the red and orange piping on the bottom of the shirts from the pant legs. Florida Panthers will be attacking right to left with the white shirts and the blue pants. So this gets dumped down the ice by Lundell. Picked up now by Rizichka. Christopher Tana needs some help, but this is kept in by the blue line by Gudis and through the screen. Now, and behind the office of Ladar is Matthew Kachuk as he tried to just backhand the pass out in front of the crease. And this gets stopped into the neutral zone. It's going to be Brandon Montour picking this one back up. Montour holds. He's going to leave it here for Kachuk as this goes back here to Montour. Puts this all the way down the inboards. That's going to be offsides, I believe. We're going to get a neutral zone draw. 18-10 left to go in the second. John, are you with you from Scotiabank Saddle Dome? It's a 3 nothing lead for the Calgary Flames. And if everything else is going to stay the way it's supposed to, and Cooper Hopkins joins for this third period, he's going to take this third period call. I'm going to sit back and provide color for it. It's been a good start here for the Flames. We'll see if that continues. They're showing some Dan Vladar highlights on the Sportsnet side as we were waiting for the puck drop. And, boy, he's been pretty good over the last couple of games, but he's got an 0-4-1 record in the last five with his numbers being good. So, He's not got the support around him, but if he can have another night like tonight where the Flames score three goals and he's only faced 10 shots so far with 17.45 left to go in the second, you think that would have to bode well if Vladar's numbers can continue to improve because he's been pretty decent, obviously. So Zadorov fanned on the clearing attempt, and now he's going to get on his horse, not necessarily fleet of foot. This column white need to get around two hits did Zadorov. Good stick check there by Lewis. It's picked up now by Milan Lucic. Lucic still has it near the left side red line. Using that body to get around two Panthers and put this toward an open right wing. Here's Rasmus Anderson. Drop pass and the one-timer from Toffoli gets blocked. Here's a breakout opportunity potentially here. It's Carter Verhage trying to leave this for Sam Bennett. Another one open right wing. Fakes the back pass for a slap shot. One of the D and it was fired way wide toward the left side red line. And now picked up by Elias Lindholm. Extra pass here for Rasmus Anderson. It's he's going to go back and take his change in the forwards. We'll begin to move this. There's Elias Lindholm now for Tyler Toffoli as this spins around back toward Florida. <clears throat> They're going to be going right to left as Carter Verhage gets around a couple of Lindholm stick checks. Gets across the flaming sea now. Going to drop it here for Matthew Kachuk. Fires a short side, but that one goes just wide of Dan Vladar. He was aiming for the stick side of the hand as this is picked up now. Nice in between the legs pass. Sets up Andropani. And that shot got fought off there by Bobrovsky with the right side of the post and the stick. This is picked up now by Stoll. They're showing Matthew Kachuk's shift time about a minute 15 right now. As he's about to head off. Staying on side is Dylan Dubé. Now with Majapani, It falls right back to him in between three Panthers. And now a couple active stick checks. Great work there by Michael Backlund to be able to buy some more time. As this gets picked up now, Brandon Montour has to get on a hit. Stone fanned on his shot. The stick knocked it away. It's a cross pass opportunity. 
And that got knocked away before it ever got to Dan Vladar. Stahl can't find it. Backlund now. Montour trying to pry this loose here for the Panthers. And now this goes back to Racco Gudis. Gudis will wait as he's going to play this to one of the forwards here. And Florida needs to get situated and get that space in to get this breakout going. Now toward a Lindell pass. That shot goes off the back side of the net, up and out of play. 15-26 left to go in the second period. John on here commentating from Scotiabank, Saddle Dome, and Calgary. These are two teams, 9-9-3 Calgary at home. 10-8-4 is the Panthers' record on the road here tonight. Both of these teams need a win to stay above their respective playoff line in both conferences. That's not what you would have thought of for the Florida Panthers and last year's President's Trophy winners and not what you would have thought of for Calgary to start at 5-1 on the season. So this is a game that's very important for both teams. And a situation that we talked about in the first period where I wondered why Paul Maurice was uh, – Hired over and then let go from Andrew Burnett. It just didn't make a lot of sense to me. So picked up now in the defensive end is Racco Gudis. We'll get this across to see. Comes together there with a huge hit from Rasmus Anderson. We'll see if there's some retribution there for that one. As Richie's still coming together with a couple players, but now some active stick checking here for Florida. Calgary's got to get set. Racco Gudis. That was swallowed up by Vladar. And some more pushing and shoving as Richie is still eyeing another one of the Florida Panthers. That was a good hit by Rasmus Anderson. Maybe be a little bit of embellishment on the Florida side as far as, I don't know, if Rasmus Anderson's like the incredible Hulk, able to send some other players flying, but still good elbow up there, not toward the face side, but a little bit of push off. And the Racco Gudas just knocks down uh, Brett Richie like a sack of potatoes and then gives a slash at Rasmus Anderson. So Racco Gudis, he's no uh, worse for where he always likes to dole out the punishment, but good for Rasmus Anderson to show it on the other end, an offensive defenseman that can still lay the wood from time to time as you're getting a look on the Sportsnet feed between both of those sides. That's what I got here tonight on the ESPN Plus side because the Sportsnet feed is probably far superior to the Florida side from when I listened to it a couple times. What a pro-home count there for the Florida Panthers more so than anything. You would imagine that way too for Calgary, but – I like the feeds that kind of call it the way it is, but they're not calling the game free anyway. I like when they say good things about both teams. Sometimes you don't have that on certain broadcasts. So this is backhanded in nicely out of the air. Lindell, good block by Zadorov. The other shot goes wide toward the right side faceoff. God, as Florida is finally starting to make some inroads and get some pressure here. Although they're down 3 nothing, but they're getting what they want right now to start a little bit of the second period within the first six minutes, meaning – getting shots on net and trying to make something happen, forcing the play as they force Calgary to ice this puck. That's the first step before they can ever score a goal is actually get the puck in the zone and start getting some chances. That's just what they need to do right now. And hopefully for Florida's sake, they can continue to do a lot of those same things because in the first period, they got absolutely destroyed. So they're showing Lomberg. I mean, a couple shots there for Vladar as he held in that right post. Shot out in front, got bounced off a couple of Calgary body before it ever hit the dark. And now Todd went to Foley. We'll watch this one from Jonathan Huberdeau as Huberdeau gets this one down deep. We get a whistle on a stoppage with 13.56. Are we getting a penalty on the ice? Too many men against the Calgary Flames? It looks like that might be the case because I saw Jonathan Huberdeau's exasperated face. So too many men on the ice. This is going to go against the Calgary Flames. So the Florida Panthers will come – on the power play, when we come back with 13.56 to go in the second. <clears throat> Four nothing Winnipeg over Colorado. That is a big one here tonight. I know once we type up this story, hopelessportsguy.wordpress.com, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Kraken and the Kings because if I wasn't going to be able to see Cooper Hopkins at all, I think I would have moved to that one if I couldn't do the basketball assignment. Also, I couldn't do a lot of prep there for Virginia and Michigan, so I didn't want to go in there without any homework done. At least like you can do with the depth chart, something else in front. It's easier to do a hockey game that way. I'm going to have to do some Seattle Kraken games. Maybe I'll get Cooper to – work one of those games with me because he lives in uh, – he's from Seattle, Washington on that side of it, and uh, this would be pretty cool 
to get a chance to work that game. I haven't covered the Kraken yet in their two years almost of existence here. I'd kind of like to, considering the way that they're playing. Kings and Kraken, that's a good Pacific matchup. So I'm going to take a look at that one once this game is done. <clears throat> Don't give up. Don't ever give up. And there's five black jerseys right now. There's going to be one player going off, and watch what happens to jump on. So. There was a too many men line change here for the Calgary Flames. So it's going to put the Florida Panthers on their second power play. And again, this is the obvious statement of the night. Florida needs to score on this one. They're down 3 0 to the Calgary Flames. Calgary's got three goals on just nine shots. It's a too many men bench miner at the 6 04 marker as this gets dumped down to Sergei Bobrovsky. And again, because of the other night playing, it's going to be a start there for Sergei Bobrovsky instead of Spencer Knight as they lost in overtime the other day to the Edmonton Oilers. And Sergei Bobrovsky's numbers aren't going to get any better here tonight because his save percentage was under 880. He's already given up three. What's the nine shots? It's going to be even less as this gets dumped down the ice. So the power play was one for three the last time that these two teams met for Florida side in a shootout loss as Brandon Montour. We'll get this one down to Aaron Ekblad. I'm going to get set up now for Sam Bennett. Bennett. We'll get this one down the ice. Picked up now by Trevor Lewis. And behind the office, Zadorov trying to find this one between the legs as this goes back to Florida. Off the end boards, Montour in the high slot. Ekblad will touch pass to Matthew Kachuk. Going to slap this one ahead. Picked up now, Kachuk. Extra pass across. Good puck movement there by the Panthers, but good blocking there by the Flames. Big rebound, and that one could not be held. By Montour, as you could have had a look at the open goal and the wraparound for attempt for Kachuk goes wide. Picked up now by Montour. Here's a chance for Lindell. Lindell with the longer shot. Another huge rebound. And this one's cleared down the ice by the Flames. They got to make some quick changes. Slap shot in off the lively inboards. Picked up now by Listerinen. He's got it now. As Rasmus Anderson can't get to it, there's a lone man. And behind the office of Dan Ladar, looking for a short side shot for Bennett. And he fired that one way wide, all the way down the ice. The Florida puck movement was pretty good. They had a couple opportunities, but some good shot blocking there by the Calgary Flames. They can dodge this bullet with four seconds up to go. Patrick Hornquist plays this ahead of Bennett, and this gets knocked away. Nice breakaway here. It's a one-on-four still with the Flames as they kill some time. Maybe they'll have some time to get some reinforcements. They do. As this goes back to Coleman. Coleman with a centering feed. That one goes wide and picked up now by Brandon Tannen. They have the right face-off circle. Now it's Nazem Kadri setting up for the slap shot. That one gets blocked out toward the left face-off circle. And now down the ice. It's going to be a race for the puck. It's going to be a hybrid icing against the Florida Panthers. So they cannot change as Calgary touches up with 11.28 left to go in the middle stanza. John here with you from Scotiabank Saddledome. The shot totals are low. But the score is not. We still don't have a goal in the second period. There was three goals in the first from the Calgary Flames. It was a shorthanded goal to start. It was a power play goal, then an even strength goal. As it was Dylan Dubé, Jonathan Huberto, and Rasmus Anderson, your goal scorers. And they just showed a stick break off the slap shot as Mackenzie Weger just shaking his head there. I haven't said his name a lot tonight, but I haven't had to because the defense has been pretty good. And even though it's been 16 shots to nine in favor of Florida, Dan Vladar has been a good job on the back end as far as stopping some of these pucks as well. As you take a look at Matthew Kachuk on the Sportsnet feed, that's where I'm watching from ESPN Plus, the broadcast is to you tonight. They always show him chewing on that mouthpiece, and he's just shaking his head. Florida's not been able to really get anything going right now, and Calgary's done a good job in their limited opportunities. And like I said, Sergei Bobrovsky's save percentage is at 880. And he's already given up three goals and nine shots. That's a 333, well, close to a save percentage like that, or 666, I should say, in the sense of that is not good, and that's not going to get any better after tonight. So blocked a couple of times as this goes to 
Florida as they're going to try to go right to left across your radio dial. Here's Montour. This gets blocked to side there by Dan Vladar. He's holding on to the left post as Adam Rzichka has to take a hit, try to make a play, but he can't. He got wrestled down by Colin White as Rzichka had a little cross check for him. Was Reining and behind the office here, Dan Vladar. As this goes now to Rasmus Anderson and tried to be held in there by the Panthers. Blake Coleman trying to body off the hit. This goes back to Colin White on defense. Now here for Stahl. Mark Stahl will get it in deep, and this gets dumped down the ice by the Flames. They can't take a change here too much. They have to just wait and hold that diamond shape as this goes back in toward the defensive end where Calgary's got to be due diligent. Picked up now in between the legs off of one of the Flames. Here's Forsling with the wrister. Scores! Deflected by Nick Cousins. And the Florida Panthers get on the board. It's 3-1. to one. And that's exactly what Florida needed right now. 10.06 left to go as we're just about halfway through this contest. And the 17 shot draws first blood here for Florida. It's 3-1. Although they're still behind a couple of goals, it was Forsling that got deflected in the high slot beautifully by Nick Cousins. He got the stick down. Nothing Dan Ladar can do on that one. My blame for him on that goal is 0.0%, as that was a gorgeous deflection there by Nick Cousins. Makes it 3-1 Calgary. As this gets dumped down the ice, off the faceoff win, back into the defensive zone of the Flames, and we'll see how they respond after giving up the first goal here for Florida. Nick Cousins, third of the season at the 7th, 9.54 marker from Gustav Forsling and Aaron Ekblad. Remember Aaron Ekblad just a couple weeks ago returning from some small injuries. got six assists on the season right now when normally those point totals would be higher. But again, no Alexander Barkov. you got to make up some of that offense. Here's Stahl with a cross pass, and that one for the Flames thankfully went wide. They're being up shot 7-1 in this period. As this goes back to the Flames, again, they're just trying to play defense for the most part in the second period. And again, that's what I said over a few minutes ago before that goal. This seems like a better period for the Panthers, and they need to continue this. And if they can, they can make this the game. Because that first period, they did not show much of anything. And that was a high bounce for Hagee. A couple cross checks there with Weir, former teammates, as we look on. I think we're going to be going to an immediate timeout. Yes, we will. When we come back, Nick Cousins just made this a two-goal game. It's 3-1 Calgary Flames with the lead now, 9 5 in the second. <clears throat> did the Flames score in the first 10 minutes? Says Way Crime Trusty. Yes, they did. They scored a few times, actually. Let me pull up that box square here for you. So the Flames scored at 305 and 921. To answer your question specifically, if you're still in here, buddy. Discussing the call. Put power play for the Panthers over two. 
Flames need a kill here because unaware to the rest of us, it's been a high sticking or a hook call against the Flames. So a third power play here for the Florida Panthers after they've just already scored one from a Nick Cousins deflection. And now here's a chance. This could be a break. There's a chance for Backlund as he wired it high above the top of the crossbar. And now picked up by Zadorov. He's going to put this all the way down. It's going to bounce off one of the Flames and be called an offside. That's how you're going to have to rule it. That one was just a little high as Backlund had a chance to let something go there. But this was a goal just at the 9.54 marker from Nick Cousins. It was Gustav Forsling and Aaron Eckblad. It was Forsling's shot that was tipped on the blue line side on the left by Nick Cousins near the right side faceoff circle. Beautifully, nothing Dan Vladar could do. It made it 3-1, and that's where we are right now. So Rasmus Anderson gets this one down the ice as Florida is on their third power play of the contest. It's a 3-1 game now. Shot totals are 17-9 in favor of the Panthers, although they're trailing 3-1, but this is their third power play. They had just scored a couple of minutes ago, courtesy of Nick Cousins. So Aaron Eckblad with the slow spin. That's the slowest spin I've ever seen as Lindell will put this one down deep and try to get one by a couple of stick battles. There's Kachuk is being hounded, picked up now by the Flames as they get down a couple of stick battles down the wall. This was centered dangerously, but thankfully for the Flames, it was cleared all the way down the ice. 12 of 18 on the penalty kill in the last seven games. That's 66% on the last seven. That is not good. That needs to be improved as well. Sam Bennett will quarterback this thing. Series of stick handles. It's one on four. Flames do win that battle, as you would expect they should, as this goes back to Brandon Montour. Plays this back. Montour has it now, as they're still mixing in between the defensive partners. And now it's Carter Verhege. Verhege just slams this around the kick plate. Battle for it again as Mackenzie Weger gets stuck with it. It's Brandon Montour now in the high slot. Makes the pass across for Bennett. Bennett has to wrap it around. Good active stick checks there by the Flames. And they'll clear this one down. So the kill has been good. That's three straight power plays killed. A shorthanded goal and a power play goal for Calgary out of the two out of the three. But here come the Flames. It's four on three. Although the Flames have the four, and Jonathan Huberdo comes all the way back. Hits this pass to Nazem Kadri, and now it goes to Elias Linnell. We're trying to get around Racco Gudis. Good active stick check there by Linnell, and Huberdo tried to center it out in front dangerously, and now the defense, Manila Hannafin, has to go find it. Tripping call against Racco Gudis. That was right in front of the Zebras. He just can't do that there. He had a clear line of sight. It was an easy takedown. Paul Maurice. Puts his head down as I almost bit my tongue. Geez, it's going to be a power play here for the Calgary Flames. As Racco Gudis goes to the box. Let me give you those numbers here. So it'll be the third penalty against the Flames. There's been three penalties against the Panthers. So that's the way it is right now. Third power play for the Flames, I should say. So three penalties apiece on both sides. So it's going to be an offensive zone draw. Anderson, Toffoli, Kadri, Lindholm, and Huberdo on the ice right now for Calgary. Trying to get shot number 10, if you can believe it at that, although they have a 3-1 lead right now, and that is shot number 10. It's right off the draw. It's held there by Sergei Bobrovsky. So here's the thing for me, for Bobrovsky, I'll just say this quickly as we get a stoppage. I know that he's been a long-time Columbus Blue Jacket. He's had a lot of good numbers here. He might not be the goalie that he once was, but if he's going to continue to have a safe percentage that is below 880, I know Spencer Knight's about 22 years of age right now, but you're going to have to force Spencer Knight to play a lot more games than probably he's even ready to do so. I know he's going to be goalie numero uno here going forward, probably as much as next year or as soon as next year. But Sergei Bobrovsky really has to pick it up. He cannot play this way. Otherwise, he's just going to play his way into a backup role even though he's being paid like a starter. That is some money that Florida wishes they could probably put elsewhere if he doesn't pick it up. Tyler Toffoli will slam this around the kick plate off the slap shot clear as this is held in. Rasmus Anderson. Now Tyler Toffoli. This goes back to Anderson. Off the backhand, Anderson's got to be quick. A couple of stick lifts there. Still able to use that body and fight it off to Rasmus Anderson. So Florida 
did their job as far as killing time, and Rasmus Anderson did his as far as going back and collecting that puck. So Backlund, series of stick handles, gains the entry. Gets this pass across. He's just going to play through an open wing, does one of the Flames. And Florida will clear this down the ice where this hits the stick of Dan Vladar. Second straight start for Dan Vladar. He stopped 17 of 18. Power play was one for three the last time these two teams met. One for three on both sides the last time these two teams were between Calgary and Florida when Calgary won in the shootout. <clears throat> Five minutes left to go in this second stanza. John, I'm here with you. On the call, if Cooper Hawkins does join me on the third, he'll take this third period call unless he says otherwise. I'm going to have him take it because this is his team. We're just going to work this game together. It would be difficult for us to do another game throughout the week because I'm a little bit busy and so is he as well. But next week, hopefully we'll be able to get another uh, defined meeting. It'll be next Saturday against the Toronto Maple Leafs. That'll be a huge game that I would be looking forward to if he wants to do that one. Trevor Lewis. Weger. He shoots it way wide, but it bounces to Richie, and he scores! Unbelievable! Brett Richie, he just found it off of a Uyghur slap shot, played it in between his skates, fired it on Bobrovsky. Look what I found. It's 4-1. <laughs> I don't know if I could say that he meant to do that. Obviously, you know you want to go ahead and look and shoot and score. That's the obvious statement. But Wager, it's the drop pass, tees up a slap shot, and Brett Ritchie just beats Bobrovsky. And again, just like I talked about Bobrovsky in the previous part, that is one that he has to have. Somehow Ritchie snuck that in toward the right post. Bobrovsky, all he can do is smile. But, I mean, if you don't have that kind of goaltending, and you've given up four goals, you've only made six saves, that's just not going to get it done. There really is no other way to say it. Bobrovsky's got to be better. He's got to have that one. Good for Brett Ritchie, but that just can't happen. As this goes back now toward the Calgary Flames, they win that stick battle there with Elias Lindholm, and this goes back down the ice. This good shot goes back in his arm, and he gets punished. Here's Sam Bennett. It's a three-on-three -three opportunity here for Hagee. Going to take his time. He's going to let one go. Vladar made a big save, although we didn't know where it was. It's sitting down near the right side red line, but it's safely picked up by Noah Hannafin. Excellent. Clear all the way down the ice. Andrew Majapati off the back end of Kadri. What a stop by Mabrowski. There's the one that they've been looking for. I don't even know how he made that save as he stonewalled Kadri. And here it comes the other way. As the Florida Panthers and Verhage gets knocked off the puck. And now Stone. That was a gorgeous save by Bobrovsky, but where has that been? Picked up now by Forslin. And now the Flames can get this one down as Dylan Dubé or Majapani. They play this one a little bit ahead. Nikita Zadorov will put this even more ahead. As this is picked up now by Lindell. Glove down. Here's a chance. And they score. That was Carter Verhage. With a long wrist shot, I'm surprised at that handcuff Ladar. But again, I'm even more surprised at the previous save there by Bobrovsky and the previous shot there by Rishi that went in. It's back to a two-goal game. And Sam Reinhardt makes it 4-2. to two. So I thought that was Verhege, but no, that was Sam Reinhardt. He just let one go, full speed in between the defense. I don't know if it went off of the stick. Let's see. Of stone, maybe it went off the stick of stone and changed direction. Still a good shot there by Reinhardt because that was full speed as he was able to put that one in. So now it's four to two again. It's back to a two goal game with three minutes left to go in the second. And now I'm really hoping that Cooper Hopkins can join in on this third period because this could be spicy here. This is a game that's going to stay close as every time Florida. Thinks that they could be out of it. Calgary, you know, scores a goal, or Florida comes back and scores a goal. That's the way that it's been right now. Ruzichka gets a nice steal. He's playing this along the embankment toward the wall as this goes back in between. Picked up by Backlund, trying to center it out for Ruzichka, but good covering there by the Panthers. And they got to be able to get back on the side off of the clearing attempt due to the Flames. And now the Panthers can make a transition as they go all the way back. Clear it down. And the Flames go across the Flaming Sea. Last one home. Gets this one down. This gets picked up by the stick of Bobrovsky. And I guess what I can say 
because you can mark down that save on Kadri if Florida does come back because that was a goal that probably should have went in, even though the Richie goal probably shouldn't have. So now Rasmus Anderson hits this around the end boards as they put it back in. Calgary just trying to get this puck in deep right now with the two-goal lead as this is canceled off the puck there by Hornquist. Nice pick up there by the Florida Panthers. Noah Hannafin will come back and collect in his own end as he's being judicious about it. And now Hornquist turns it over. Pass a little bit too far there for Elias Lindholm. And a flame, flames icing as we have some players coming together. Noah Hannafin, Epiniemi as well. We'll see if anyone else can be going to the box or whether or not the referees just say, let's guys, let's close this down with less than two minutes to go. It's back to a 4-2 game. John Andre with you from the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. It's the 9-9, 9-9-3 Calgary Flames and the 10-8-4 Florida Panthers. Two teams that need a win to stay above this playoff line. I see one Florida Panther in the box. Is there going to be two? So it is a four on four. It's going to be Huberto and Hornquist. As they go, so yeah, it was a slash. Jonathan Huberto and a couple extra ones for Hornquist. So here's the thing for me. I know Huberto hasn't had the numbers throughout the season as you want, but if you're telling me that I can take out Patrick Hornquist in exchange for also taking out Jonathan Huberto, isn't that an advantage there for the Florida Panthers on this four and four side? I know they're not, they don't have Alexander Barkov here tonight, but you would think the Florida Panthers have the advantage in that situation of taking out one of the better players on the Flames side. But we'll see how that one goes. One four and one record in the last six games against Calgary are the Florida Panthers. So the Flames have enjoyed this matchup. They're enjoying a 4-2 lead right now with the buck 15 left to go in this second period. So picked up now Tyler to Foley as there's a series of cross checks. Waiting for the rest of everybody else to get on side. Rizichka says, I'm just going to take this one as he uh, backhands this deep into the offensive zone. A couple stick battles, but it couldn't be won there by Lindholm. And now this goes to Matthew Kachuk. We'll see if he's got some space on the four and four. See if he looks for his entry. Matthew Kachuk, he got knocked off the ice and no call. He wanted a tripping. He didn't get one. Rasmus Anderson, he's going to play this as it bounces off of him. Now Dylan Dubé trying to go around the inboards as he canceled off Montour. Majapani. Still holding off the backhand, trying to buy some time. 38 seconds left to go in the second period. Picked up now by Majapani as he's still with it. He cross crosses with Noah Hannafin. Now to Dylan Dubé. Back to Dubé. As this is picked up here from Anderson. Dubé with the wrister. That one gets blocked. And now Montour, if they hurry here with Kachuk, they could have a two-on-one. Here's a chance. Kachuk as he zoomed in, and he got canceled off with the body by Rasmus Anderson. What a terrific job there is. That should have been a dangerous chance. Andrew Majapani, open dot, pass, dot to dot pass, and that one gets held by Sergei Bobrovsky. What a play there by Rasmus Anderson. Is he absolutely bodied? Matthew could chuck off the puck. He looked like he was going to stick handle his way inside. A big could chuck hit on the other side on Lindholm, and then Rasmus Anderson. Gave it right back to Kachuk. He was stick handling his way into the slot, and Rasmus Anderson said, not so fast, as he took him off the puck. So good work there by the Flames and good body checking on both sides. So we're going to get close to ending this second period right now. The Flames will enjoy a 4-2 lead after two periods. They come right back. We'll call the third. I should be joined by Cooper Hopkins. He might take it the whole way, and I might run on color. Stay tuned, everybody. Appreciate the like on the YouTube side. Following along, we'll get the third period action here shortly. I should be joined by Cooper Hopkins. He might take the call there for the third. Or I might have to finish this one off myself, but it's been a good contest so far. Mm-hmm. 
What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything it was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hot. <laughs> The ACC Big Ten Challenge begins at 7 15 on ESPN. Jimmy Shreve was to be cancer. We are not going to stop chasing a dream. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Period, but it's a full two week for the Flames heading towards the third period of the past day from David Amberberry's idea of law. He countered in the win for Jonathan Huberto to beat 115 point Jonathan Huberto from a year ago. Slow start for this new team. He played for nine professional teams, two in the NHL. How tough is it to get that chemistry with the new teammates right away? Yeah, that year's problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's definitely a challenge. And, and one of the bigger ones for me was uh, going up and down from the minors uh, to, to, the, uh, to the NHL. And you have to pick that up. It is, you don't get New system, we have new teammates, and new cities, new arenas, and I think the system too is always the same. And people think, oh, it's just playing hockey, but coaches do have subtle, or, like, you know, little, little things that they do that are different uh, at, at every level. And it's not easy just jumping into a situation like that. And sometimes right away, you'll, you'll know if you know if it's a line or, or a defense pair, uh, you'll know right away. And sometimes it takes more time than others. The new Euros face new country as well as a new conference, right? And definitely a new coach. In Daryl Sutter. So uh, maybe so far so good as far as tonight goes. 4 2 Flames on top. Capitals and Canucks over on Sportsnet Pacific. Alexander Ovechkin, a historic goal early on. That's <coughs> the 402nd career Rose Bowl. Yes, great eight. Closing in on Gordy Howe. So he tied the record, and what do you know? He sets the record. Great to Spencer Martin. Oh, just a heavy shot. Two nothing caps. They could have been on a hot streak, but they run into the Grade eight, and then Nils Holmlander does cut the deficit to a 2 1 game. Nice move right there from the start of September. But Anthony Memphis made it 3 1 caps for 20 in Vancouver on Sports Net Pacific. Abs and Jets. Jets, Jets, Jets. What a game for Blake Wheeler. Back, baby. Big shot right there beats Gordia. More Wheeler coming your way. Second of the game. What a cost. <laughs> There is a skill play right there. I mean, you see there are Hattie. You got some Hatties? 11 years ago. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a lot of Gordon. You got a lot of Gordon. And there's the hat trick for Blake Wheeler. Five, nothing. Just a minute. Maybe the best thing in Canada. So let's take a look around the league right now as we got our. Oh, well, there's a big fight here. Hold on a second. Between the Islanders and the Phillies, there are some meat clavers being thrown there between Martin. I don't know who that is for the. Philadelphia Flyers, but my God, there's a couple really good ones here. Don Johnson here for the Islanders. They're throwing some punches there. In between Delorier, holy cow, the first two fights within the first eight seconds were a spectacular show in between the Islanders and the Phillies. That was something I should have watched there. So the Flyers get a big 3-1 victory over the Islanders. That is a good surprise and some good fights on that side. So in our game, <clears throat> when we come back, it'll be a 4-2 lead for the Flames to start the third. 
It was three goals in the second period. It was Nick Cousins off a beautiful deflection of the Gustav Forsling shot. That was at 9.54 of the second. And then it was a Brett Ritchie answer from an angle again, another impossible angle goal from Brett Ritchie. He's good at those. As this was near the right side red line, picked up somehow near the crease. He fires it near the right post. It beats Sergei Bobrovsky as he tries to just slide and cover that right post, but it beats him and goes in, a goal that shouldn't have went in. Then it was an impossible save by Bobrovsky on Nazem Kadri to keep it leveled at 4-1 at the time before the final goal of the period was Sam Reinhardt. It was a pass from Antoine Lundell. It was a wrister near the right circle that handcuffed Ladara and went in. It surprised me that it did go in. It's 4-2 after 2 with Calgary with the lead. But you look across your scoreboard right now, it's the Washington Capitals with a 3-1 lead at the end of the first, if that is correct. Yes, it is, as that's updated. Alex Ovechkin with a pair of goals to start the night, 4-0-1 on the road, and then 4-0-2. Anthony Mantha scored at 14-35, but not before Niels Hoglander scored for the Canucks. It's 3-1 lead for the Washington Caps as Ovechkin continues to rise above those charts. I'll pull up my full scoreboard here. The Kings have a 1-0 lead over the crack. And again, that's a game that I will follow after this game is done tonight when I'm finishing writing up the story. The rest of these are finals. It was a 3-1 victory for the Boston Bruins over the line. And the Bruins improved to 19-3 on the season. That ties the New Jersey Devils with the most amount of points for the best record in the league. The Sharks destroyed the Canadians 4-0. It was a 3-2 victory in overtime for the Hurricanes over the Pens. It was a two-goal effort by the Hurricanes. I'll score them 2-0 in the second. Penguins get the one to tie in the third to get to the overtime. Hurricanes score the overtime winner. Let's see who the overtime winner was for. It was Brett Pesci with his second, the defenseman from Andrei Sveshnikov and Seth Jarvis. Jake Getzel's got 11 on the season. Marty Natchez is 11. Sidney Crosby opened the scoring with his 12th. What else is new for Sid the Kid, although he's not a kid anymore, that's what I will continually call him. <clears throat> the Kraken just tied this game up. It was Anze Kopitar 16 seconds in from Kevin Fiala and Drew Doughty. And then Matty Beneers, the Michigan man on the power play, his eighth of the season. I'm so looking forward to, if Cooper Hopkins does join me, I'm going to make mention of this, I'm so looking forward to the fact that we should do a Seattle Kraken game because I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. I think this team is actually legit. That's just me. The other final that we have, we told you about the Flyers and the Islanders and a couple good fisticuffs matchups there. The Devils, the Devils, my fault. The Predators beat the Ducks 2-1 in overtime. And the Jets, how about this score? 5 nothing drubbing of the defending champions. So it was Wheeler, Shifley, Wheeler, Morsey, and Wheeler. A hat trick for Blake Wheeler in this contest. Let's see how many points he had. So I'm looking at Blake Wheeler. Let me see if I'm on the right side. He had three goals and an assist tonight. Mark Shifley had a goal and two assists. Cole Perfetti with three dimes. The Winnipeg Jets and Rick Bonus, you got to like that. Alexander Gergi, I'm not sure up tonight. 792 save percentage, 19 saves, 24 opportunities. Uh, Hellebuck, yeah, you can't say that Colorado didn't at least try in this one. How about a 40 save shutout for Connor Hellebuck from Wald Lake Northern? I want to say I'm going to get my Wald Lake, Wald Lake schools uh, mixed up. If you can go ahead and correct that for me, any Wald Lake alum over here on this side, <laughs> let me know. But Connor Hellebuck with a 40-save shutout effort and a 5-0 win for the Winnipeg Jets. <clears throat> I am going to pull up. So we got 7-19 left to go on this side for the intermission. So we got some time. Because we have 719, I'm going to take a couple of minutes here while we're in the middle of the intermission, if nobody minds. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the Kraken and the Kings because I just can't look away as far as some of this stuff that I've shown you. 
So this goes back to John Forslund here for the Kraken inside. So we'll have something good to watch once this game is done as well. And the story. So full coverage for the Flames and the Panthers are going to follow. Hopefulsportsguide.wordpress.com. And hopefully Cooper Hopkins can join me here for this third period. And if he can, we'll go ahead and uh, get his call here in for the third period if he does it, is able to join. <clears throat> So Maddie Beniers with his eighth of the season at 521 the far play from Alex Wimberg and Justin Schultz is the latest goal for the Kraken. So the Kings now have this in the defensive zone. I should look up and see on our box score on the computer side to see who is in the net. So it should be Jonathan Quick and Martin Jones, I believe, unless they're going to go with Philip Grubauer. But I'll go ahead and take a look at the box. We know it's Jonathan Quick in for the Kings. We're taking a live look in. So Jonathan Quick, five out of six on the saves. Martin Jones, two out of three right now. <clears throat> We're just getting a little bit of a live look in before we switch over. We've got about at least another five minutes here for the intermission part of it as the shot for Seattle goes just wide to the right post of Jonathan Quick. Philip Dano finds it as it goes back here between Jaden Shorts. Jaden Shorts from Card and Susie. Shorts going to hold off the backhand, going to give here to Susie. Now Andre Burakowski is going to stick hand all around Philip Dano. He's still got it now near the left side dot. As Burakowski gets it back, but Dan O won't leave him alone. Holding off the backhand still is under Burakowski. Now he gets some space to line and fire. And this is picked up in behind the net by the Kraken as Carson Soucy tries to get to it near the right side dot. He gets worked off the puck there momentarily, but Seattle's still with it. Good work there for Shorts. Burakowski also trying to help here as Carson Soucy now finally gets a piece of it, but this goes to the Kings. And they can look to break out with Victor Robertson right to left across your radio dial as we're getting a live look in between the Kraken and the Kings. And somebody went the boards hard. That was Victor Robertson. See if that is going to be called. So we're going to get a stoppage here. They're going to show Matty Benier's goal. I'd like to see this. 1-1 one, one is the score in the first period. The power play goal for the Kraken as they tie it up against the Kings. 12-05 left in the first. <clears throat> Your NBA scores, Dallas held off Golden State on the road. Golden State loses another one on the road. Is it going to show their road record? Golden State is 11-11 11 11 on the season. Dallas improves to 10-10. 10 10. So a pair of 500 teams. It's amazing that Golden State has been so poor on the season on the road, and yet they're still 500. That's kind of crazy the way that that is. Let me pull up the NBA side of it. I just want to look at the standings just in case they show home and road splits. So the Boston Celtics have the best record in the league right now at 17 and 4. Bucks are second, 14 and 5. Suns are third, 14 and 6. That's the first that we mentioned in the Western Conference. Denver Nuggets are second, 13 and 7. As the Cavs have uh, fallen a little bit of late. So let me look at this. Home and road split for Golden State. They are just two and ten on the road, but they're nine and one at home. How the hell do you do that if you're Golden State? I, I don't know. But I mean, I guess if you look at Dallas, it's it's nothing better on that side of it because they want to they want a home game. They're nine and three. Dallas is one and seven on the road, so they're really no better than uh, Golden State on that side. <clears throat> So Matty Veneers this season, eight goals, 11 assists, 19 points, leads all NHL rookies right now. So that puts a smile to my face as the Seattle Kraken are sitting second in the Pacific Division right now. I'm just going to flip this to the NHL side of the standings. <clears throat> Tuesday night here in Los Angeles. 
So Kraken are trying to go for six in a row. They're second in the Pacific at 13-5 and three. Only Vegas is better with 17-6 and one with 35 points. The Dallas Stars have 30 in the Central. Vegas has 35. In Colorado, they got smoked tonight, but they played still four less games than Vegas. So eight points in hand possibly here for the Avalanche. But boy, did they get blasted by the Jets tonight in a 5 nothing loss. So if Calgary does hold on to win, they're going to go back into the wall card spot. They'll be in wall card spot number two, just a point behind the Edmonton Oilers with 22 games also played just like Edmonton. And if Florida were to win this game today, they would go back into the wall card spot as they would go ahead of the Wings, I believe. But that might be ahead of the Penguins because the Wings also have 26 points. The one good thing for the Red Wings is they only have 21 games played as compared to the 23 for a lot of them, so they have games in hand. <clears throat> and the Red Wings also have a game in hand on the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Bull only behind one point. But they're going to need to continue. Once Cooper Hopkins is in there, I can talk about this a little bit. The Red Wings are going to need to continue to get some of these wins here because their schedule going into – December here is not easy. They're going to be playing teams that are above the playoff line the whole way through, so they got to watch out for that. Calgary's got the lead, four to two. Tyler Toffoli gets a steal, and Calgary's already off and running here on this four on four as it was a faceoff win by the Panthers. Tanev lets it go onto the screen as this gets blocked by Aaron Ekblad. I'm going to go ahead and get Cooper Hopkins in here. He's going to take the play-by-play -play as we uh, get things going, if he wants to do, as this goes back in here now for Florida Panthers. The four-on-four -four is done, and this goes back now to Aaron Eckblatt. But this gets canceled off as Majapani picks this up, right up across the dot. Here's Nazem Kadri. He's going to be the first to get to it, try to float it out in front, and this gets intercepted there by Lindell. Lindell with a nice pass to Matthew Kachuk off the inboards. It's going to be a battle here with Noah Hannafin, and Hannafin, is able to get the active stick, get it off the backhand, and clear this one right to left across. Here where it finds Dylan Dubé across the flaming seat. Leaves it there for Kadri, but it's offside. Cooper, you want to take this one? Go ahead, buddy. Well, John, I uh, have zero doubt, my friend, that you have been holding down the fort tonight. And uh, it's been it's been an interesting game in Calgary so far. I, uh, I was actually in the car for a little bit. Otherwise, I would have jumped right on. Uh, in the middle of the second period, but it would have been difficult to make comments having <laughs> the whole video feed. So uh, I'll jump into the play-by-play -play here, and then we can catch up in a second as the puck is in the Flames O-Zone. The Florida Panthers moving left to right on your radio dial are now streaking into their offensive zone. The puck bounces off the end boards behind Vladar, wearing number 80 for the Flames. Those classic blasting jerseys with the alternate horse head logo from... Uh, a period the Flames would often like to forget. Those early 2000s weren't great for them until the team of 2004 changed the tide. But the Flames right now are trying to push that tide into the offensive zone. There's a shot right there from Michael Backlund, the longest tenured Flame on the team, and the puck hits the netting for a break. So, John, catch me up, man. I just, I just want to know your thoughts on uh, tonight's contest. Flames have a goal of almost every variety. I think they scored shorty, power play, and regular. So, uh... 
I know you have a second here. What have you been thinking about their game so far? So how about three goals for the Flames in all variety, like he said, in the first nine shots? And then I also wanted to make it your notice of it's a second straight start for Dan Vladar. Yes, it is. That's something we will discuss as this period continues. I'm sure you've mentioned it uh, in your coverage prior to me joining. Thanks for letting me jump on board. So 18-15 to go here in the third. Flames, excuse me, the Panthers take over possession with a quick shot on right there, and it is gloved down by Bladar. That's former Flame Ryan Lombard wearing the lofty number 94 for the Panthers. And he puts one right on from the faceoff circle. It's going to be a defensive zone draw for the Flames coming up in just a moment. I know, Cooper, you made a mention about the jerseys. I mentioned a couple times, I said, I really like those. And if the Flames can continue to score in all these varieties, I think they need to wear them more. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, it, it brings back good memories for me, for sure, as a, as a longtime Flames fan. Right now, the Flames are able to win the D-zone draw, and they have possession in their end, skating steadily out back toward the Flaming Sea at center ice. Now, Milan Lucic tries to step around the defender, does so. That's Radko Gudis. He gets pushed along the boards, but the Flames will hold the puck in and cycle it back around. 21 shots for Florida, 15 for the Flames. The Flames not particularly active on the shot board in the second period, but did put a goal in thanks to Brett Ritchie, and the battle behind the net, and Bobrovsky is eventually won by the Panthers and cleared down. No icing here, though, as Noah Hannafin will chase down. The tall left-handed defenseman for Calgary holds in his own end, patiently waiting for the change on the fly, with 17.20 to go here in the third. Puck is bounced through the neutral zone all the way back to Bobrovsky. He paddles this one along, and the Florida Panthers will send back out Puck slides neutral ice, whereas Adorov fires one on, and Bobrovsky actually had to come out and consider playing that puck, but it bounced under his glove. And now here come the Flames, trying to hold possession near the left boards, and Zadorov has been shooting a ton more this season. He does so right there. There's a shot from the right boards, and Bobrovsky pads away with the right leg. So the Flames looking pretty solid here early, John. I want to get your thoughts when we get a break. As a man goes down in the offensive zone for Florida, Zadorov put a nice check right on. And so Foley has the puck momentarily. He will send this one skyward, float the puck into the Florida end. Flames will change. Now on the ice is Weger. Weger goes left to right. Flames with a partial three on two here, but they can't keep possession, and it's a turnover. Panthers come back the other way. Reinhardt with the puck. He's a goal scorer. He tries to gypsy do around Tanev. Tanev slides down on the ice and denies that opportunity. Great job by one of the Flames' best defensemen right there. There's a shot from Nazem Kadri. Bit of a knuckle puck. And Sergei Bobrovsky, who has been fighting it tonight, letting in four goals on just 16 shots, he makes the glove save, and we've got a stoppage. That was a very important play there by Tanev off the back check, get a nice stoppage there when the Panthers could look dangerous there, Cooper. Yes, indeed, and Kadri really did put a knuckle puck right on. He was checked by Mark Stahl, and I think that shot may have deflected just a bit off of Stahl's stick. But Bobrovsky sees it all the way and is able to make the save. 16-16. So oh, sorry, John. Go for it. I was going to say, Bobrovsky's save percentage so far this season is at the 880 marker, and today's performance is going to do him none better. Yep, absolutely. He, is, uh, he has been struggling this year, no question about it. And now coming the other way is the Florida Panthers' offensive push. There's Verhege right there. He tries to go around back, but does so centers. And that one goes through. I think that was Josh Mahura. And he was not able to possess the puck as that 45-degree angle pass goes right through the wickets. So he'd like to have that one back. Nice offensive series there for Florida, but nothing to show for it as the Flames pick up a turnover here. That one shot right off. Bob Roski thought he held it, but it bounced off the pads. And the Panthers will skate away, but a nice stick check right there. Some end-to-end -end action right here, John Ott. Red Ritchie having a nice game, and his forecheck is a strong one for the Flames as they try to repossessed near the players' benches. But Florida knocks this one all the way back down to Dan Vladar. He will take it on his big goal stick and send it along. And the puck is now in the Florida end, bouncing with a fight there by Richie, who's still on the ice. And Milan Lucic also skating. We've got Lombard with the puck yet again. He stretches the pass over to Colin White. And now there's a shot on, a save by Dan Vladar. And activity behind the net. Michael Stone in just his second game back with the Flames is going at his old teammate, Ryan Lomberg, and the referees have to step in. 
So that was the second time that we saw something. That one was a little more involved. It was one of those penalties that Kachuk took was a cross check on Zadorov on teammate on teammate front. Very interesting, John. It looks like Stone got his glove up in the face of Momberg, who was none too pleased with that situation. And now Michael Stone skates away with a bit of a cut on his lower lip. Uh, but no penalties will be assessed. And, oh, excuse me, I'm going to stand corrected, John. You see what I'm seeing? Players I, in the box. I am seeing players in the box. And, Cooper, I would have been surprised if there wasn't because that was a really elongated uh, scruffle there between Lomberg and Stone. Yeah, interesting there. At the first, uh, Daryl Sutter looks a little confused. <laughs> he's shrugging, saying, hey, guess what, boys? That's hockey. But uh, for, I believe, the second time tonight, John, we're going to have a four-on-four with 15 yes. to go here in the third. Yes, we are, and we'll see who this ends up favoring. Calgary had some opportunities here on the four on four, but you got to be mindful of Kachuk. I will say that he's been silent tonight, but a four on four, it might give him the space that he needs. Yep, absolutely. Matthew Kachuk, of course, the former Flames, spent six years, the first six years of his career here, and there's a stretch pass that's taken by Elias Lindholm. He and Kachuk had a collision earlier in the game. Luckily, there was no ill intent there. The former line mates made sure to check in on one another and uh, see that they were all right, and they both certainly are. So, 30 seconds of a lapse here in the four-on-four. Four. Lomberg and Stone in the box for the Panthers and Flames, respectively. Coming up the left wing here is Toffoli. Nice stick hand leg right there, but he'll have to cycle this one back out to the neutral zone. He's got Weger and Tannen behind him, and he drops off for the former Panther, Mackenzie Weger. Mackenzie Weger, the right shot defenseman, pretty fleet of foot. He's going to tap this one up to Dubé, who's had a nice game so far. Not the greatest year for number 29 of the Calgary Flames, but... Dubé on the score sheet twice tonight with a goal and an assist, I believe. John, maybe you can confirm that for us a little later. Uh, but we now have one minute left on this four-on-four. Four. The Flames have had most of the possession for the last 60 seconds as Mackenzie Weger tries to beat his man. And there's a soft backhand that Bobrovsky is forced to handle with Manjupani on the doorstep, and he makes the easy save. And, yes, it is a goal and assist for Dubé. One of them is a shorthanded goal that opened the scoring and then getting assist at the end of it. So, Cooper, I have to ask you, in between a 9-9-3 and record for Calgary and a 10-8-4 and record here for Florida, at this point in the season, do you think it'd be two teams that would be below the playoff line right now? Yeah, I, I absolutely do not think that anyone expected that. Um, you know, we, John, have done a number of Flames games this year, and other than – other than a, you know an exception or two that I can recall, really, the Flames have been what their record shows. Uh, this is what we've talked about, a theme we've talked about many times. Calgary is able to display in flashes how high their ceiling can be, but so often they're playing closer to their floor. They just aren't playing to their potential, and chemistry seems to have been an issue. Uh, John, you were able to watch uh, and call both uh, the first and second period now, the Flames having trouble getting shots to Bobrovsky, but have been able to get some in the net. Now, let's be honest. I think Bobrovsky is this year's Grubauer. Grubauer last year for the Kraken just did not hold his own and was a big reason that the Kraken struggled so much in their inaugural season. Bobrovsky seems to be, mm, let's just say, a, a good distance from his peak play. Yes. Uh, do you think that just goalie play is the reason the Flames have a two-goal lead right now, or are the Flames actually playing up to their potential? Cooper, I'm going to say it the other way. I think it is because of Bobrovsky here. I mean, that Richie goal, I know you're in the car or whatever. He's in toward the right side of the dot. He just puts a shot in near the right side post that had no business going in and just wasn't covered there by Bobrovsky, and it was a big goal to give up. He's not played well. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, obviously, and I was I was catching up with uh, Derek Wells and Peter Gabardius on the Sportsnet 960 feed, uh, so that was the Flames radio broadcast, and I think they were both very surprised. Bobrovsky seemed to be a little out of sorts and out of position on that goal, mm -hmm. and that uh, is something that has haunted him throughout the season, and I believe, John, uh, that, like you said, that 880 goal, uh, goals against average is going to be dropping even yes. further. <laughs> So we are back under the action. That is a trademark saying, ladies and gentlemen. That is all John Ryan odds. So you must contact him directly if you ever plan on using it. 40 <laughs> seconds here on the four on four as the Panthers enter the Ozone immediately get a shot on. But Dan Vladar, who uh, in contrast to the uh, goaltender at the other end of the ice, has looked pretty steady, John. You, you like what you've seen from Vladar so far. I do. And I think even before at the beginning of the season, Cooper, whether it was fair or unfair, I think – well, Dar's got to get some more starts to make sure that Markstrom stays fresh throughout the year. 
Yeah, absolutely. Markstrom, uh, you know, still a top goaltender, but has not necessarily been uh, elite this season. And uh, I do want to make note that the last shot on goal that was saved by Vladar was by former Flame Sam Bennett, still rocking uh, his excellent Lanny McDonald-esque mustache this this time of the season. And so 20 seconds to go here on the 4-on-4. The Flames cycling in the offensive zone right now. Nice drop-off pass right there. And a long shot attempt by Chris Tanev. Hits a leg and bounces out. Now streaking the other way are the Panthers. Carrying in right there is Gustav Forsling. And it's held by Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk cycles. He has the puck back again. Looks to shoot from the right circle. And that one hits the blocker. He was trying to go far post. I thought that one was wired, John. I was about to make a Matthew Kachuk goal call. But a nice stop by Vladar. And the Flames come back the other way. Here's Brzezicka, who's been a revelation. He's cooled off a bit of late. But uh, has been a huge piece of the flame success when they've had it in the last five or six games or so. So 12.38 to go in the third period, 24 shots for the Florida Panthers here at the Scotiabank Settledome, 18 shots for Calgary wearing their black alternates with the quote-unquote Blasty logo on the chest. And right now we have a fight to Dan Vladar's, not excuse me, no fight, just a battle for the puck to Dan Vladar's right. Nice stick handling by the Panthers right there. Couldn't get a number. John, maybe you can see who was dancing around some of the Flames defenders, but the Flames are having trouble exiting their zone right now. Rasmus Anderson was in the corner and tried to knock the Panthers off the puck. Eventually, the Flames will carry out, and Rizicka chips this one in. Bobrovsky has to play the puck, while Backlund forechecks nicely. He's joined by Coleman, so Backlund and Coleman against three Panthers, and it's cleared out there by Colin White. Coming the other way is number 21, Nick Cousins, centerman for the Panthers. Zadorov's going to pick up in his own end in the trapezoid. And a little battle right there for puck possession. Going to be won by Milan Lucic. And right there, Brett Ritchie. Excuse me. Yes, that is Brett Ritchie. He's looking for the puck near the Florida players, Florida Panthers bench. Milan Lucic, another puck battle. Vizikali picking up here with 11.25 to go in the third. Playing some possession. Nikita Zadorov from the left point. Fires this one high and wide in Bobrovsky's net. It's flipped back around. Brett Ritchie maintaining possession of the puck on the left wing, and it's going to be taken by the Panthers, who will skate away, but the Flames have numbers back, so it's sent in from a distance. Vladar handles the puck for a bit of a, an awkward period of time there. Expected him to play that one a little more quickly, but no damage as Lucic is able to flip this one out. Now to Foley on the forecheck, and the Flames will go for the change. The Panthers will as well. So a pretty good flow to the action here, John. Not too many stoppages, just one or two pucks up into the netting and a few saves to speak of. But right now, the Panthers are looking to regain possession in the O-zone. Battling for the puck is Patrick Hornfist. The Flames have it momentarily, almost turn it over. Mackenzie Weaker has to backhand it out, where Ekblad will get it at the center red stripe to try to chip this one back into the O-zone. Stoppage in play right here, John. So uh, the broadcaster curse of the light variety. I said we had some back and forth play, and of course, ten seconds later, there's an offside, and the play is whistled dead. No, it's been a good back and forth third period here, and I'm just looking at the Kachuk wrister now. Man, that seemed to be labeled for the top left corner. He had just another half a second, and Rasmus Anderson took a uh, nasty hit near the left side faceoff dot. There's been some good physicality in this third. Yeah, Anderson really did get rocked there in the corner, and uh, I think he took his frustrations out on, once again, his former teammate, Ryan Longberg. Uh, and right now, Chris Tanev tries to hold the puck, going to chip this one back behind Vladar. Vladar can't find it, and then he sees uh, Tanev skid away with it now up the right wing. He'll flip this one forward. Kadri chases down. Collecting the puck there is Brandon Montour for Florida. Now Kachuk has the puck, tips a pass forward, and has it the blue paint. Excuse me, the blue paint. And knocked away out of midair. Dangerous setup right there. Kachuk looking much more lively in this third period. There's a shot from beyond the faceoff circle. It's loose in front again. Kachuk on the doorstep where he's had so much success. The puck is loose in front of Lenar. No one can find it. The Panthers have it now. It's all the way back at the blue line. So the Panthers with a ton of pressure right now. And Mackenzie Weaker will take over. A nice draw weight on that pass. And here come the Flames the other way. Three on two. Jube trying to hold. He loses the handle for a moment, and there's the centering attempt. Manjupani was waiting to pass, but it never got to him. Now one-on-one -on -one the other way. Icing waved off. Noah Hannafin gives up the puck to Kachuk. Kachuk backhands a pass. It's shot and saved. Blocker stop by Vladar. And another shot ricochets off the glass. It will skitter all the way down to the Florida end. 9-13 to go in the third. 25 shots for Florida, 18 for Calgary. But Calgary has the advantage where it counts. 
4-2 for the home squad. Right now, Michael Backlund battling down low. And the puck bounces out front again. Flames having a little trouble right here. John, this is what we've seen so many times from Calgary this year, where they have held a lead, and then other teams will come back, chip away, push, press, and eventually erase that lead only to take the win. So let's not speak that into existence for all the Flames fans everywhere. Let's hope they can maintain this advantage and potentially build upon it as Blake Coleman is able to push the puck into neutral ice, but his shift is over. He'll change the door off, tries to streak in, and actually gets the puck from forehand to backhand, but couldn't corral the move. I think he does draw a penalty, though. There's a hand in the air, John. What are you seeing? I can't believe it, but number 16, six foot six, Nikita Zadorov drives the net and draws a penalty, I think. You can't tell me that that's a defenseman on that type of move. you got to love that as we go to a break with 8.25 left to go in the third. And it says, uh, once we get a look at it, I'll get some clarification. I think it is a penalty. Yeah, wow. And excuse me, I hope I'm not overselling the excitement right here. We have really had some good action. And uh, I think it has to be said that Florida over the past two minutes, or, excuse me, two minutes or so uh, has really hit the gas. They've looked like the more dangerous team. And uh, credit where it's due, Matthew Kachuk was uh, in the middle of a few of those plays. Yeah, and so I just want to make this quick point. Josh Mahura is the one that's going to the box, so the Flames will go to their fourth power play. And the one little moment in time there, Cooper, when you saw that no-look sauce pass there for Kachuk, that looked pretty sweet. So you get a little moment of his skill that you've seen so often. Let me just make this quick point to you, Cooper. Well, now I have you on the broadcast. I understand last year was Andrew Burnett's squad. It's a lot different team, and no Alexander Barkov tonight. But after they got swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning, they made the head coach and changed to Paul Maurice. And I will say this just off the offhand, this does not look like the same Florida Panthers team from last year. They had some stretches in the third, as you said, but they could come back down from three, four goals, no problem. But they've had some struggles this year doing some of the same things they did last year. Yeah, you know, and, and John, this is, I mean, these are obvious points, but they deserve to be made. And, and it's a Flames team that are experiencing the same or very similar uh, challenges, right? Where mm -hmm. you have your primary facilitator, your all star level forward in Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, and, and no slight to Matthew Kachuk, he's just a different player uh, than Johnny Gaudreau, who, who really can create from anywhere on the ice. And I think that that was uh, Jonathan Huberto. For the Florida Panthers, and Huberto has had a quieter season this year uh, for Calgary, and is is starting to show what he's capable of, but hasn't done it consistently. Of course, the irony of me saying that is that he scored tonight. Um, but these are two teams that are still finding their way with uh, new leadership for Florida, as you mentioned, and uh, really a, a brand new makeup and new leaders expected to to kind of bear the torch and and, and be at the the front of the push for offense, don't you think? Yeah, I do. And I, th I think that does take time. Like we talked about, some of these starts can be an aberration, but it takes time to build. Yes, it does. And, and it's, it's true for both of these teams. And, and right now, the Flames have better of the visitors with 4-2 advantage, although here's a two-on-two -two the other way. And sprawling was, I think, Rasmus Anderson grabs Tanda. Couldn't get a number on that one. But the Flames come back down the left wing, and now we're into the slot area. It was Anderson who prevented a scoring chance at the other end, and he almost had one of his own. As the Flames are on the power play right now, he winds up for a slapper at the blue line, Rep Anderson does, but he will pass this one over to Toffoli. Toffoli down low. He's got Huberto. Huberto now has the puck. It's chipped away. Nice stick right there from Radko Gudis, and the puck will bounce just barely out into the neutral zone, and the Flames will take over. Anderson doesn't go for a change, but the forwards do, but Huberto stays on. He tries to stick handle around Gudis, again, can't do so. And now here comes Florida on a two-on-one, short-handed. And that pass attempt by Sam Reinhardt is off his skate. But unbelievably, the Florida Panthers still have possession. Vladar having to be very attentive in net. And with 40 seconds on the power play, my goodness, John, this is a couple of power plays in a row now that have looked pretty poor for Calgary. I mean, it basically looks like we're playing five-on-five. Five, and now Dan Vladar has to cover up and a face-off will come to his left. And Dan Vladar, he wanted to play that one instead of having to cover up. But, again, it's a power play, like you said, over the last couple. A little bit discombobulated, and they're fortunate, I think, Calgary, that the one sauce pass and the two-on-one -on -one did not connect as Rosicka was all by his lonesome. Yeah, Reinhardt uh, could have opted to shoot right there, was looking for a teammate, and Reinhardt was just in the right spot. Excuse me, Rosicka was just in the right spot. 
And speaking of being in the right spot, that's Noah Hannafin right now who collects the defensive zone win for the Flames and is able to send this one down behind the prop seat. Back on the forecheck there. The puck bounces off of the kick plate and the dasher all the way to the neutral zone. Flames are able to recollect here. It's a three-on-one the other way. This one goes to Backlund. He looks for Rasichka in the low slot, and Rasichka couldn't collect and fire. That was an opportunity gone, wasted right there for the Flames. And with 6.25 to go in the third, the penalty has expired. So I believe, John, the Flames are one for five now, I think, on the power play, or perhaps mm-hmm. one for four. Let me know if I'm incorrect there. Uh, but either way, they scored once, and the others have gone begging. So now 27 shots for Florida, 18 for Calgary. And there's a shot that gets through some traffic. I don't think Bobrovsky saw it, but it bounces off the pad all the way back to the point. And now here come the Florida Panthers. Mark Stahl skates it out. Battling for the puck right there is Calgary. They're able to chip it back to their offensive end. And somebody is hurt. Or no, excuse me, we have a lost skate blade. It's Brett Ritchie. He can't get off the ice. 5.45 to go here in the third. So a bit of bad luck for Calgary, but a bit of good luck. A moment later, as the puck goes up and into the crowd, and uh, John, am I seeing, I think we have a, a skate blade missing for Brett Ritchie of Calgary. Yes, we are. He unfortunately lost a piece of it. Now they got to help him back to the bench. And again, right, with the skate blade missing and all that, if the play was still live, you'd have to wait until Ritchie could get back in there before you could even make a change, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. If you have a player still active on the ice, you have an equipment issue, <laughs> you have to do whatever you can to get back to the bench. And boy, it's... It's always it, it makes me hold my breath every time I see a player struggling to get back to the, to the player's bench with no blade and skate. Yeah, we always see a little bit of everything, Cooper Hopkins. I know you joined me here a little bit late, but this game has been uh, pretty fun. And again, honestly, between that uh, shorthanded goal, like had a couple extra octaves there for you on the call between uh, Backlund and Dubé. But, man, this game has been fun, and we'll see what ends up happening because – if Calgary ends up winning this game, they go back to the second wild card spot. And Florida stays right where they are. They're in the mix here between Detroit and Pittsburgh. Tampa Bay is all the way back up there, third in the Atlantic. So it is all the big boys starting to make some news, although the big storyline of tonight is one of the other games that we're not covering tonight. How about a 5 nothing loss for the Colorado Avalanche over the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, that is uh, that is something that, that look we've been talking about what we expected at the beginning of the year. I if you I think we did talk about this and you did ask me. I thought the Jets would be a fringe team competing maybe for the last wild card spot. Mm-hmm. But right now with this win, the five nothing win, one goal in the first, two each in the second and third, shutting out the Avalanche, the Jets actually have a better record. Than Colorado at 13 6 and 1, the Avs at 12 6 and 1. So certainly the Avalanche uh, don't need to panic, but that's not the kind of performance you want to have against a team like the Jets. No, Connor Hellebuck looked good. He had a 40 save shutout tonight. And you know who else continues to look good are the Boston Bruins. John, who's oh. going to beat Boston on their home ice? Anyone? <laughs> we're, we're, we're still waiting for someone to. <laughs> They got a Baker's dozen now, 13 wins, no losses at home. They continue to extend their NHL record streak of home wins now. Uh, so the Flames win the neutral zone draw here with just 540 to go in the third. And, John, this third period has just been speeding by. I hardly realized it, even though I've been announcing the time. didn't realize that uh, the Panthers, if they're going to try to get back in this thing, basically have to get a goal here within the next two or three minutes or so. So right now, Backland battling for the buck, and the Flames are unable to come up with it. There's a slapper from the blue line that has Dan Bernard a bit handcuffed. That was force lane firing at 96 miles per hour. And there's a quick shot right there from Sam Bennett. He was looking for the top corner, but sent it wide. Flames are going to go for a change on the fly here. Five minutes to go. Here comes Kachuk. He tries to dance around, and there's a pass to Bennett. It's saved by Bernard. The backhander goes wide. So Kachuk and Bennett connect. Now the Panthers pressing right here, looking to get this lead down to one. And another shot is not through to Vladar this time. It bounces off some bodies. And here come the Flames the other way. It's Uberto who is denied by Bobrovsky. His best save of the night on the backhand. And the slapper is in. It's 5-2 Flames thanks to Teapot. Tyler Toffoli makes no mistake. Wow, what a sequence that was on the other end for both goalies. What a stop by Vladar. 
Another one for Bobrovsky. The big time bomb could not be corralled by Big Bob there. He just couldn't get back in the net. Defoley makes it 5 2. That should be at Cooper Hopkins. That was the flurry of the night right there. My goodness, boy. They, we're getting the Sportsnet replays right now. Just a great sequence by the Panthers. They deserve a ton of credit. You know who else deserves a ton of credit? It's Bobrovsky sprawling to make the left pad save on Huberto, and the puck squirts out from the left corner. Bobrovsky can't get back in position. I don't think it would have mattered if he was in position. To Foley with a howitzer makes it 5-2, to two, and that, I think, my friend, might be the nail in the coffin with 4.25 to go here in the third. But uh, this is the Flames team of 22-23, <laughs> so let's not speak too soon. But here comes Nazem Kadri. He's going to chip this one in behind Bobrovsky. It bounces off the back of the cage. It's taken right there by Radko Gudis. He'll flip this one to neutral ice. It's picked up by Calgary. It goes through Kadri skates, and it's shipped forward. Chasing the puck right there is Montour, and he blows a tire. Goes down near the face-off circle, and that allows the Flames to take over. They have possession and skate out of their own zone. Under four minutes to play here as Tanev cycles back. He will drop this one for Uyghur. Now the Flames going to bleed some clock. So Uyghur goes back to Tanev. That one chipped ahead. It's taken by Trevor Lewis. And off of a skate right there, the Panthers will come away with it. But Backlund battling for it near the blue line, and the Flames now take over. So the puck loose. It's avoided by one of the referees. Backhanded out by the Panthers. So we're going back and forth right now as Rasmus Anderson, Swedish defenseman for Calgary, has possession and chips over to his pairing mate, Nikita Zadorov, who drew a penalty earlier on a nice drive to the net. Right now, Michael Backlund will go off for a change and ship this one down low to Bobrovsky's right. Rzichka with a nice check right there on Mark Stahl. And the Panthers will streak out. Flames have numbers back, though. Somebody loses a stick. That's Anderson. And wow, taking a big spill right there is one of the Panthers. And I didn't get a number on that one, John, but somebody's gone down twice. Actually, that's Carter Verhage. And there's a shot on to Vladar. He'll glove it and make the stop. Also... It has to be noted that Bobrovsky left the net, so 5-2 Flames. We'll see what happens here if Bobrovsky heads back in or stays on the bench. I think Carter Verhage also needs that stop. He got worked as he fell into the boards, and then he got cross-checked right after that. So it's going to be a offensive zone draw here for the Panthers. They need three, and it's 255 left. Yes, indeed. Yeah, great point. Verhage was pinballing around in the Flames zone right there, but he seems to be no worse for wear as the Flames win the defensive zone draw. Now Huberto with it. He will skate into the Panthers' end, and this will be taken away by Florida and chipped back down the ice. Flames with both defensemen back. Florida will hold, try to get that one to the high slot. And with the empty net, the puck will be knocked all the way down. Montour is there, so icing is called. Still 5 to Calgary, just 2.36 to play here in the third period. I know we say this a lot, Cooper, and I probably don't have time to go through the whole thing, but this will be one of the very few games that I've seen Calgary actually win when they don't outshoot the opponent. And hopefully that's something that they can better use going forward to get them going. Yep, absolutely, John. You make a great point. It's probably a combination of Bobrovsky's uh, challenging night for being generous there. And there's a shot from a sharp angle on Florida, and they will send this one wide. Still an empty net. Six on five. Florida with the extra attacker right now. Verhage's going to send this one across. He gets the puck right back. There's a slapper from distance. Doesn't make it through, but does bounce in the slot. Flames try to clear it out. They're able to do so. And holding right there is Tavoli. He will fire and just miss the empty cage. And there is an icing. My goodness, Tavoli with a quick wrist, or he just missed by about six inches. And you get one, Cooper. You get hungry. That one was awfully close. Yes, it was. He fired that one from where Daryl Sutter was standing. And uh, but just to finish my thought as we get a brief break here, John, I think we have a combination of a challenging night for Sergei Bobrovsky in net for Florida and uh, the Flames. Just finding the net and getting a little uh, a little puck luck. They created some chances and were able to build upon them and finish, which has been a huge challenge for them really all year. Now, to talk to Tyler Foley again, I'm sorry I couldn't get a number on that one. He was still on the ice because of the icing call. And here's an icing the other way, unexpected. But the Florida Panthers send this one in from beyond the center red line, and Bob Rosky will have to return to the net. It's an offensive zone draw for the home squad. Yep, and Bobrovsky is getting the start tonight because Florida lost in overtime the other night to the Edmonton Oilers. So Spencer Knight gave up a few, lost the game in overtime, and now we have Bobrovsky and Ed, and they're going to be 
going for back-to-back -back losses here in this Canadian road trip here from Florida. That's not what they want. Yes, indeed. Not an ideal return to Alberta for Matthew Kachuk. But right now, the Flames look very comfortable with a three-goal cushion. It's 5-2. Empty net now once again. And he'll check that. I believe it's going to be another icing as Noah Hannafin skates down. And we will have an ozone draw once again for the team in black. Well, for all of the uh, fast-moving action that you had in here, Cooper, we're going to make up with it with all the icings here to end it. <laughs> Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like we've gotten almost all of our uh, back-and-forth crazy action out of the way here. Daryl Sutter looking a little pensive. I'm sure just wanting to get back into the room with the victory as the offensive zone draws one by Cal Grace back to Hannafin. He tried to fire that one on, but it bounces off the skate. Now chasing down is former Flames Sam Bennett. He tries to chip it along, but Rasmus Anderson takes over, and there's a fight for the puck there in the right corner. And Panthers try to come away with it. They are able to do so. One minute, 15 seconds to go here in the third. Puck in the left corner now. Looking for the outlet pass. In the flames now. We're going to finish this one off 6-2. You would think they have the two-on-one. And yes, indeed, it's Andrew Montrepani who makes it 6-2. Calgary, the give and go and give it right back. Number 88 fires past Bobrovsky's blocker and hits the back of the net. Cooper, I won't say this disparagingly. For all the numbers, for those that didn't watch this one tonight, Bobrovsky had a 0, 0.0 chance of making that save. That was a perfectly executed two-on-one that was finished there by Majapani. I'm going to be completely honest, John. I literally thought that Bobrovsky was out of the net. I thought <laughs> Majapani would just skate in and tap it home for the empty netter. But that was so much better. And Dylan Dubé has really had... A revelatory game, number 29, the forward for the Flames has been a little bit of a lot, has a little bit of a challenge this year. He's been maligned, but he's found the net. He's has multiple assists, a three-point night for him. And Manjupani makes no mistake as he sends one to the back of the net to make it 6-2 Calgary. So 45 seconds to go here, and pretty much all that's left is uh, the cheering for the fans and the three stars and a little post-game action from yours truly, and John Ryan Ott. Although, John, it wouldn't be a game that we're calling if we didn't get a late penalty. And there's a hooking call of course, against yes. a very angry... Wait, now, wait a second. Uh, I actually don't have number 70 for the Panthers on my lineup. you got to fill me in, my friend. I saw Hornquist was angry about something. Michael Stone is going to the box. Yes, indeed, yep. And that was... Excuse me, I had to refresh right there. I didn't have uh, Hornquist just literally on my screen. I had to do a little scrolling, so excuse me. I promise I'm not a Luddite. I'm just <laughs> catching up here in the third period, still getting warm apparently, but Stone is back in the box, so is Hornquist, so uh, it's going to be, no, excuse me, just Stone in the box. Boy, John, I'm just fumbling all over myself here. I'm too excited. I can't believe the Flames actually scored six goals tonight, <laughs> and now they're going to have a two-on-one the other way. Here they come streaking in. There's a pass and a save by Bobrovsky. That should have been seven right there. The shot was right on from Trevor Lewis, but with 20 seconds to go, Bobrovsky makes another nice stop, and the power play will continue, but ultimately not matter. We'll see if the Panthers can make it 6-3, but with 10 seconds here and probably one more chance at it, we'll see what Lazar has to say about that, and he corrals a shot from the blue line. Five and a half seconds to go. The Flames fans here in the Saddle Dome are on their feet, and we get a shot of Matthew Kachuk, who John really hasn't contributed in all of that. Well, much of a meaningful way tonight. A couple of sequences where he uh, made some offensive opportunities out of very little. But other than that, not much to speak of. No, and you know it's got to eat at him a little extra, you would think. You'd think so, and there it is. With zeros on the clock, but six goals on the board for the Flames, wearing their alternate jerseys tonight, and they're heading to the blue paint to give Dan Vladar some well-deserved congratulations. An excellent performance from the Flames' backup goaltender tonight, who's starting to look more and more, John Ryanot, like a starter in this league. It's 6 2 year final from the Saddle Dome. The Flames over the Panthers. What a win for Calgary. Yes, it was. And again, I'm glad that everyone, they know they always go over there, congratulate the goalie. But I think Dan Vladar did a hell of a job tonight. And his offense actually picked him up a little bit. And there was some good defense there by Calgary to actually help out Dan when he needed it as well. I thought it was a very well played game across all facets here for Calgary. And you know many times when we've done this game, Cooper Hopkins, when we've covered the Flames, we haven't said that every night, but this is the one that you got to savor. You know what? I'm 
I'm savoring it right now, John. This is, I'm just I'm just excited to see the uh, the Flames be able to give each other some uh, some well deserved congratulations. And it's nice to see coming off the bench in his baseball hat, Jacob Markstrom uh, looking really the most excited of any of those players. It's nice to see the support between those goaltenders. They've both had their moments this season. Ladar is looking stronger and stronger. Markstrom uh, is still such a stalwart for this Calgary team, but has not been, uh, like I said before, probably not up to his standards. I know he expects a great deal of himself, um, as does Daryl Sutter and the coaching staff. But leaving those details aside for just a moment, uh, it's it's very exciting to see the Flames come back after, uh, I believe it was a three-game losing streak, return to home ice where they had, just like everywhere else, pretty average results this year. And against a, a strong Panthers team, who admittedly is underperforming, still a strong Panthers team that uh, I think you and I still expect to make an appearance in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs, the Flames take care of business, and, and they get a big win 6-2. Yeah, it would be a monumental disaster, I think, for all the Flames fans after winning the President's Trophy last year if they did not make the playoffs. So, again, they need to be able to get some things going. And Florida lost a couple in overtime. Calgary had lost three straight, I argued, Tonight, when doing this game, that both of these teams badly needed to win. But it was Calgary that came out there tonight and played an excellent game across all facets. And like I said, this isn't something I've been able to say too often. Although I will say this about Sergei Bobrovsky, with the 739 save percentage and already at 880, and those numbers keep going south. I know it's one game, and I'm not picking on Bobrovsky for that point. But you're really putting pressure on Spencer Knight at the 21 years old of age to go ahead and be your top goaltender. And if they can't figure it out with Sergei Bobrovsky, who's going to be the backup? Right. Yeah, you bring up an excellent point. And, I mean, if, if this is the kind of performance and the numbers bear it out, this is the kind of performance. Let's say Knight uh, performs at a high level and it, it stays fully healthy. Listen, the guy's still going to need a break. Yes. If, this is what, if this is what's going to happen, let's say on average once every week or eight or nine days or so, if you're just going to be taking L after L because Bobrovsky can't get the job done, I mean, that's got to be worrisome for the Panthers coaching staff. Yeah, and I mean, there really isn't anything they can do to fix it at this point because, like I said, when you're looking at it last year, every single time this team was behind, it could be at three goals, and I'm not even exaggerating, Cooper. They could come down from three goals in the third period and absolutely destroy you and turn the other way, but this isn't that team right now, and it was a big win for the Flames, so I want to just look at the upcoming opponents here, so for Calgary, it's going to be another home game at the Settle Dome on Thursday against Montreal, Montreal got destroyed tonight for nothing, so you would think, that was the hands of the Sharks too, so you would think that the Flames can come back and get this one before they have to play the Washington Capitals on Saturday, where they want to get some revenge for that one, I would imagine. Yeah, I would think so. I think that goes without saying. I'm, I'm really interested to see that Canadians and Flames game, not only because it's, uh, you know, one of the original six that now features former Flame Sean Monaghan, uh, but uh, the Flames and, and, and Montreal Canadiens have a little bit of history. I think it's ancient history at this point, but uh, Montreal won one of their cups in the 80s uh, at the expense of the Flames, and then the Flames uh, were the only team to win a, a clinch a Stanley Cup on Forum Ice uh, back in 89, beating the Montreal Canadiens in six games. Uh, so a little bit of history there. And, and, of course, if we're talking modern times, I think that's a game the Flames have to expect to win, don't you? I do. I think you want to build off something that was really good against Florida today. It would be a shame if you go ahead and kind of drop to the level of Montreal. I know Montreal has been hanging around right now. But considering the Sharks took them out as bad as they did, you think the Flames want to build on what they did tonight. So as far as I just watched Seattle score, I think that was Manny Veneers again. 4-3, the Kraken have the lead over the Kings. They just flipped over on that side. My goodness, what a team they've been. Uh, what I was going to say, Cooper, as far as next week goes, I know for the rest of the week it's going to be hard for us to, you and I, to do a game because they got the assignment on Saturday and be busy for the rest of the week. But Wednesday – the Flames play the Wild next week, or it'll be a Saturday on uh, CBC between Toronto and Calgary. So maybe we can work on the Saturday game if that's the big one, if you're not doing anything, although I know it's going to be earlier on your side because you're three hours behind me. So I think that would be a 4 o'clock start for you. So I don't even know if we can swing that one, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, and you know what, John, just really quickly educate me here, as you, as you so often do in our broadcast. Normally it's uh... – 
you know, it's, it's stats, history, and all the good stuff that we uh, we, we cover when we do these uh, when we do these games. But so wait a second, you're are you fully East Coast time or are you Central time? I'm fully East Coast time. So if you're on the California side of it right now, it's 11:40 for me. So isn't it what 8:40 for you? Yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah. But now wait a second. Now wait a second. Just can't let me follow the thread here. Mm-hmm. So you're 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 in Michigan, right? Yes. Okay, so then you okay, so that's where I'm having to align myself with where. So you're close to Central Time, but you're on like the west edge of Eastern Time. Yes. Got it. Okay. See, look, I'm learning, John. <laughs> I have my my sad brain has the ability to retain your information. I promise. <laughs> no, we're um, we're all good on that side. I just I know sometimes it'll be hard if it's like a Saturday and the game starts at seven. I know it's four for you, so I I don't know if we'll be able to do the Maple Leafs game. Although I'd be Jones and at that one because I know that would be a huge one for both of us. I know we both look forward to it if we could. But maybe Wednesday would be better for the Wild. But it's it's up to you. We'll figure it out next week if we can get one. Yeah, absolutely. No, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it, and I think I have that one penciled for sure. The Flames at the Leafs, and the Leafs. I mean, right now looking looking pretty strong. They're looking like they're continuing the momentum that they created for themselves last season. And uh, maybe maybe we'll see if this uh, if this is a spark for Calgary after some challenges. A uh, nice win against the Panthers again. The final score six two. Uh, really, it was, I would say, Dylan Dubé leading the way, having a nice game. Rasmus Anderson had a nice game on defense for the Flames. And uh, Jonathan Huberto with a couple of points right there. I know, as before we exit here, just uh, I know his goal relied on a little bit of puck luck. I think he got a good bounce. But sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes that's, that's the, the formula you need to open the door. No, that is what you need. And like we talk about a few times here for Calgary, they just haven't had that kind of luck this year. I and mean, they've gotten some of that in this game, but they also – made their own luck with some superior play and some good finishing all the way around. And before we close tonight, Cooper, if you just if you don't have to go to sleep yet, you should turn on this uh, Seattle game and the L.A. game for late watching. It's 4-4 in this second period. <laughs> well, here's the, here's the sad thing. Oh, wait, okay, I don't want to call it sad. I call my brain sad. We'll just leave it at that. That's the only sad thing over here. But, I, you know, I am about a, a 30-minute drive from, oh gosh, I was about to say Staples, but Crypto.com Arena, we'll see how long that's, that yeah. arena is called that before Crypto.com probably folds and becomes fraudulent, but <laughs> but uh, I could have been there tonight, but uh, John, you know what, this Flames game against the Panthers was a dang good one, I'm glad we did it, and uh, the Kraken, they are becoming appointment television for hockey fans, I would say, they're a good team, they're a high scoring team. Great record. Uh, they're in a really solid position here in the, the at the quarter mark of the 22-23 season, and I'm expecting big things. I think I think expectations across the board for the Kraken are really starting to raise, and rightfully so. Yeah, I think they are, and I, I don't think I'm going to sugarcoat this one at all. I think you and I are going to have to call one of these games at some point. I think so, too. I mean, my gosh, born and raised, I always, whenever I get a chance, I always uh, shout out the Pacific Northwest and, and – uh, Puget Sound area, old Seattle is the is the home base for me. So I'm more than happy to, to uh, look on the, the schedule and see some. If I mean, heck, if we're gonna get eight goals in less than half a game so far, then uh, it's gonna be an exciting one. I know you and I would be happy to take on. That sounds good, man. So before I let you go here, was everything good for your Thanksgiving? Yeah, great, great Thanksgiving. Uh, it's kind of a friendsgiving here with my wife Jen and. Uh, we actually are lucky enough to have some friends who live just a couple blocks away from us here in Los Angeles. And we were able to walk over. We we did like a salad and, and brought a really good pumpkin pie. And uh, the food was fantastic. The company was great with, with good friends. Uh, how about you, my friend? Uh, did you have a good one? Yeah, everything was good with the family. I had a lot of them over, so everything was good with that. And it was a good time. So, uh we will catch up next week, and I will let you know how everything goes on Saturday for this assignment. Hopefully the Wi-Fi and everything else can be screwed up to do the assignment. But you and I will keep in touch next week as far as doing another Flames game. If we get on that Maple Leafs one, that will be big. So I will talk to you soon, and thank you for joining me for this third period. Yeah, man, thanks for thanks for uh, holding down the fort for two-thirds of this thing and letting me uh, come on board. And please don't forget, I know you sent it to me before, 
But uh, give me the details. It might be a different game time. might be different details. I'd love to be able to, to tune in if I can uh, to hear you doing the real thing at a real arena for a, a real game, so to speak. I'm, I'm really excited for you to remain just so proud of you, man. Keep, keep up the good work, and I'll be, uh, I'll be tuning in if at all possible. All right. Sounds good, man. We'll talk to you. 5-4 Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm turning it on. Turn it on. I'll talk right. to you, man. Sounds good. All right, John. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. If anyone else was still following along, we will be back, and I will talk to you next week. I'm going to be uh, on assignment Saturday for a semi-pro hockey assignment, but Cooper Hopkins and I will be back next week to do a full game. I imagine that's going to be Maple Leafs Flames on the Saturday side. I was glad he was able to join for the third, but uh, I will talk to you guys next week because I'll be on location on Saturday. So. We'll get back to the normal swing of things soon, I promise. But thank you guys for joining along tonight. Have a good one. Peace out, everybody.